Welcome to Nerd Church. We're going to get back in where we left off. There was a lot of, of arena action going on. I don't hate that. Just mellows it all, I don't hate that. all out. Um, we're, trying, we're trying a new drink here at, <laughs> at Nerd Church. A new sacrament has yeah. been introduced. A, a, I think I'm just going to go for it. Anything we can actually yeah. mix with tonic is, is good. That's a splash. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, think that's all I did. I I'm think I'm like 50-50 here. So, the last time we were together, we spent some time uh, in the new-to-you city of Nantong, uh, and two, two sessions ago, you uh, had some drinks, played some games, made some friends, but last time we were together, you investigated the sort of central feature of this city, which is the arena-slash-temple. Uh, and each of you kind of pursued a slightly different path uh, at the temple. So uh, Freya made an effort to pursue uh, the honor path uh, and uh, competed alongside uh, a number of Minotaur youth as well as a dishonored uh, Minotaur named Stendar uh, and just beat up on those children really effectively <laughs> Uh, shame, shame to them all. Um, but in so doing, overcoming some of those challenges, earned her way into a level one uh, honor match, which is to take place on the following day. Um, during the same visit, Air signed up to uh, be involved on the other side of these matches uh, to earn some coin. Um, also very honorable. Also very yes. honorable, but it, for, a, for in a different way. Providing a, a needed service. For supporting supporting the Sinoc, uh in in a different way for some for some coin. For mutually beneficial. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and also is expected uh, at the arena uh, at dawn to be scheduled for a match. Um, and Potom did some. Uh, research let's say hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, learned a little bit more about the the nature of the Oshira and the champions uh, and the honor path itself um, and got a little bit more of the lay of the land of the of the culture um, here supported by the matriarchal Sinak. Um, Upon returning to your lodgings, uh, you find that Pando has still not returned. Uh, this isn't super worrying to you. Uh, in your travels together now, there have been times where Pando has disappeared for long stretches of time out into the wilderness. and So you're not at the point of worrying yet. Uh, but you do uh, need a good night's sleep, and so you all bed down... Uh, in the uh, room at the inn that you have rented. And then our, I would assume at least two of you are up very early and headed to the arena uh, for your dawn appointment. Uh, anything that anyone would have wanted to do overnight to prep or first thing in the morning, how do you approach, how do you approach this day, arena day? Freya gets up early. Yes, she does. She went for the at dawn. She like brought her little amulet, put her little, put her little family out, mm -hmm. <laughs> looked at it, <laughs> centered herself. <laughs> um, I definitely think that Potom, knowing that today was is just going to be a, you know, fun at the arena day, um, is definitely slept in. <laughs> um, which is, I mean, not a common thing for him. So by sleeping in, it was just like an hour longer than everyone else yeah. who I like, got up at dawn. He was like, oh, I'll sleep until six today. <laughs> um, and then, you know, went and had a leisurely breakfast and read the, um, read the, whatever the local paper, the scrolls are, <laughs> sure. you know, had breakfast, Morning cocktail. Yeah, there you go. Morning cocktail. Yeah. 
Seems right. Uh, yeah, well, as we've talked about before, uh, here in Nantong, the um, breakfast is, a, is an event with very thick, heavily sweetened, very dark coffee mm -hmm. served, in, mm -hmm. served in small cups, uh, heated with sand in the, uh, in the style uh, that we were discussing last time, uh, and lots and lots of bakery. Uh, but unlike uh, many of the uh, Arabic countries that I'm basing this particular uh, vibe on, they do not have a problem with alcohol here. Uh, minotaurs do drink. Mm -hmm. And so it is not hard for you to get a coffee-based cocktail uh, in the morning if that's of interest. I can, I can just see him, like, you know, coming downstairs and then, like, climbing up on a particularly taller chair than he is accustomed to, to, like, sit at the bar. Yeah. And, yes, a coffee cocktail would be fantastic. What's the... What's Espresso the, martini. What's something. the Greek liqueur that they Uzo. love to do? Uzo. 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 Yeah. That's what I think this is. I think this is... It's, it is the coffee. Is the hot coffee with a shot of ouzo. A, a liqueur that tastes like that. Yeah, right? sure. Uh, dumped in it. So it's got a black licorice kind of coffee and hits yeah. and it is sort of... sticky yeah sambuca yeah it's a sticky sweet mess yeah uh um, sounds like it's right up his alley yeah. i mean he's definitely savoring it it's yeah. not like something that he's dumped back but right well and for minotaurs this is like the coffee is served in cups that for them are like espresso shots and it's a similar vibe with the cocktails so when minotaurs come in and out of this place they're stepping up to the bar like have you ever seen how Italians drink coffee. Yeah. Like when they, go, like they just go in and, and then they mm -hmm. leave. Right. It's, they don't, they're not hanging out and yeah. sipping. Like they just down the shot of espresso and go about their day. Yeah. Uh, that's what minotaurs are doing like in and out of this place. Sure. But the cup size compared to the, like An for espresso. you yeah. is more like a coffee mug. Yeah. And there's a, and the shot, is a lot. <laughs> so I think Potom's off to a good start. Sure. This is a festive and, spirit. And I'm sure that he is uh, <clears throat> is in just the best of moods and is talking to everyone about whatever. Are, Are you going to the arena today? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just see him sitting on top of the bar stool and he can't bend his legs over the side. He's just sitting up <laughs> just there like, like that. Yeah. With his legs his little up. feet kind of like yeah. going back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> lut, 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 lut. <laughs> Holding on to a giant mug. <laughs> uh and what's what's air's morning like um i think she she's taking it pretty seriously i think she's she's sharpening blades she's polishing her armor um i think there's there's few situations where she gets some um, uh such a such a clear <laughs> timeline of when she's going to be mm -hmm. in combat mm -hmm. so um i think she takes advantage of that and uh gets in the right headspace nice all right, good. So uh, the as you all kind of go your own your own paths, uh, my guess is you're you're departing the inn at different times of day, uh -huh. um, and so there's varying levels of activity that you're exposed to as you head out there. Um, but big picture, arena day is a festival atmosphere. Now arena day happens once a week so it's not like summer fest down here right mm -hmm. but it is kind of like i mean we live in milwaukee there's a festival going on every every weekend in the summer it's a little bit of that vibe like there the is polish fest there you go yeah it's like <laughs> it's, it's like polish, polish fest. fest or or uh like the area around the brewer's stadium sure. on a game day like mm -hmm. the people who are coming down for this are get a lot of them are getting there early. There's yeah. a party atmosphere already building around this. The the folks who are there to to gamble are out early to make sure they get their bets in, and bookies are already walking around taking those bets. People are selling merchandise, both official and unofficial. Uh, there's there's stuff going on here, right? Um, all centered in that that one ring road that surrounds the arena in the very center of the bottom of the bowl of this town. Um, and so 
you can imagine as each of you roll into this area, maybe a, a different experience. You're probably coming at it, coming into this area at different times and from different directions. Uh, but think about how your character would kind of react to these festivities. My guess is that Freya is there first and probably is there early enough that people are still setting up. Mm -hmm. uh, so there, there's merchants and folks like putting their booths together or laying out rugs and arranging their merchandise. And there's a few diehards who have, have been here for a little while or maybe partied through the night last night mm -hmm. and just rolled up here ready to go. Yeah. Uh, but it's definitely pre-dawn, I think, when you arrive. Uh, and there are just a couple of other uh, fighters already near the gate uh, that you've been told uh, to, um, to get to. Uh, most of them are, the, the three or four fighters that are there already um, are youths from the competition that you were part of the day before. Um, none of whom you really made a connection with mm -hmm. uh, there. Air, you uh, actually were told to come to a different gate. Uh, so uh, you enter from a different side of the arena. Mm -hmm. uh, by the time you arrive, uh, the gates are already open. And so you uh, stroll in and enter. It's the equivalent of a fantasy football locker room, uh, sure. <laughs> basically. Uh, you don't have your own space, but there, there are pegs to hang things on. There are spare weapons of very low quality. So if you didn't come with your own stuff and you wanted to grab a shield or a short sword or something mm -hmm. like that, they're kind of sitting around here. There was certainly a large and very heavily armed minotaur at the gate who kind of waved you in, having uh, seen your uh, seal from yesterday. Um, but most importantly to both of you when you arrive... Uh, once you enter, the schedule for the day is posted. And uh, there are matches going on all throughout the day. Uh, each match is scheduled to last about an hour. So it's basically like a, mm -hmm. an hour long block. And then there's a period of time in between uh, that is rest, intermission, cleanup uh, kind of deal. But it's basically broken up into an hour and then half an hour break and then an hour and then a half an hour break uh, all throughout the day. Air, you are scheduled to uh, take part in ritual combat in the second block of the day. So nice and early. Relatively soon. Yeah. Uh, about two hours from now is your time to go on. So you are welcome to hang out in this locker room or come and go. You're just told be here. Um, uh, you know, essentially at 9 a.m. Uh, or, yeah, because you're probably here, probably more like 8 a.m., mm -hmm. uh, one of the one of the earliest matches of the day. Well, I think she would be interested in seeing the at least the first part of the first match. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's visible from the locker. It's not visible from leave. the locker room, but all of the <clears throat> folks who are involved in this have access to, like, a little balcony that you sure. can look out uh, and observe the goings on so you would definitely be able to to hang out and do that um freya you are also scheduled but your match is scheduled to take place basically at high noon um and both of you learn a little bit about your matches in advance so uh air you are scheduled to uh you are scheduled to face two uh, Minotaur youths uh, who had it's recently, <laughs> who recently uh, completed their test yesterday. Okay. Um, and you will be doing that alongside two mercenaries. So there are uh, two other mercs on your team oh, who, who are <laughs> basically uh, facing down these uh, young Minotaurs. Wow, okay. Well, I hope somebody knows what they're doing. I mean, as a reminder, when I say young minotaurs, like, these are the equivalent of seniors in high school who just right, recently right. graduated. Yeah, yeah. And most of them are Could be, six foot five yeah, yeah. and 
heavily muscled. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. they're know, not like professional athletes. Basically. And, yeah, and yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm sure, it's like a, bit, a college wrestler yeah. with horns. Yeah, I'm sure that it's a bit like you want to be bit by an adult poisonous snake and not the the young poisonous snakes because they'll dump all of their venom into you. So yes, yes. these kids go hard. Yeah. Well, yeah, they, <laughs> it's, that's true. They, they really like, want yeah. to succeed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I feel like they got something to prove. Mm-hmm. Seriously. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so it's you, there's two mercs uh, that you're partnered with. Okay. Um, one a half elf and one a human. Uh, you can make an insight check if you want to get a read on them. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and then I also have questions about some of the rules. Sure. Um, oh, I am there. Uh, 14, uh, 16. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, at first glance, you've... Back in Chukib, not like you messed with mercs a lot, mm-hmm. but you got pretty good at reading at a glance the level of ruffian you were dealing with yeah. out in the streets right mm. um both of these folks seem capable yeah but certainly not elite yeah. you're not looking weekend warriors you know yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's a, a little <laughs> more like job, that yeah. <laughs> like you're guessing these are the these are the kind of folks that uh it seems like they might be stretching themselves to take this mm-hmm. for, for that they're that this is way more pay than they would be able to pull if they were getting hired to uh, here. guard a caravan or whatever like these are not elite warriors right um they're a step up from commoners mm-hmm. look like they've handled a sword before but you're not holding, holding out hope not magic users Mm-mm. no so both are in a very basic like leather like half of a suit of leather armor basically cobbled together stuff one of them actually took a short sword from the rack when they came in. Uh, the other had a pair of daggers. Um, mm. They look like they'd clean up in a bar fight uh, on an average night, but, but they don't. A, they don't strike you as high end mercs. This is cannon yeah. fodder kind of yeah. kind of people. Oh, well, yeah. you know, whatever happens, happens. Yeah. <laughs> so. Perhaps you're running point on this yeah. particular this particular combat. It's like, um, it's like just get shown up by these children, I guess. <laughs> we'll see what happens. In Potom's research, um, did he figure out what the rules were for um, Air's fight? Like, mm-hmm. Air would also like to know the rules. Yeah. Like what? Like what, yeah. What if I? What if I? I signed up for all of this, and then you told me actually there's no magic allowed. Because I'm very. Because I'm very. <laughs> Sure, that Potom definitely would have figured out the rules and then, and then wagered his bet accordingly. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Air went into how do game. how do I bet on air, and <laughs> am I going to catch hell for this in the stands? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so a couple things you do know. Uh, honor matches for the participant on the path of honor. Um, on the Masar Osh, I gotta get this pronunciation right. On the Masar Osharafi, um, the those folks, those the they are at risk of uh, death, so they right. can die. Yeah, and and it is expected that you will try to kill them. Mm-hmm. Um, those who are participating for gold uh, are life protected. So right. the the matriarchs, the cleric, the clerics of the Sinoch are right. on hand in these matches to ensure that you do not die. Yeah. Elite medical teams. Yeah. It is also strongly implied to you that nobody dies in level one matches. Right. Uh, the idea is if you succeed, great. If you don't succeed at a level one match, the first time you fail, it's not dishonor. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, you have to you have to nearly die in a level one match a lot of times before you're on a dishonorable path. You start to look bad, mm-hmm. right? There's a there's a vibe there, but um, but at higher levels because level one is the only level. Okay, you would have picked this up in conversation. Potom would have picked this up in conversation uh, when talking to that priestess of the Sinach mm-hmm. uh, yesterday. But level one is the only level that 
all basically all minotaurs are expected to achieve to participate in society like to be to not to not be like a lower caste so to speak if you've gotten through level one you're like a normal a normal ass person <laughs> uh and that and you're fine um anything beyond level one is somebody reaching to to improve their station uh in some way and there there's great honor with that but uh what you basically learn is that 90% of Minotaurs mm -hmm. never bother mm -hmm. to try for level two. They just check the box with level one. We're good now. It's the Minotaur equivalent of going to college. Oh, like, I was I was thinking that it was the high school, high school equivalent. Yeah, you yeah. have to go and get a high, you know, your high school diploma. And right, level two is, is oh, the is equivalent the college. of yeah, college, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So like, everybody has level one. If you don't do level one, you get some looks. Right. Uh, but you're also not like dishonored necessarily. You got to do some stuff to get dishonored. Um, but level two is less common. Uh, and level three is very rare. And champions are... <clears throat> like less common than professional athletes in our world. Champions are probably more the equivalent of, of globally recognized geniuses in our world. That's what it that's what a champion is in the world of Minotaurs. It's the um, uh, literal one in a million kind of deal. A champion comes along only every 10 or 15 years and um, so the, the, it's a very aggressive pyramid is what we're mm -hmm. talking about here. The funnel narrows really quick. Um, so all that is to say, uh, the rules for these fights are essentially, um, on your side of things, on the gold side, mm -hmm. do whatever you can to win. Sounds like a great side. Yeah. <laughs> you get paid. You, you, get, you can't protected. die. Yeah. yeah, I yeah. Right. Right. I think I made the right choice here. I think everybody. Yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> it's very logical. Um, and I will say, um, you get, uh, you still get paid even if you lose, but not the <laughs> but not the same amount. Right, right, right. So, you got uh, Judge Judy. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna pay you to just show up. If you win, it's a better payout. Mm -hmm. um, so you're you are paid for your participation. Right. Um, I think I said how much. Oh yeah, so fifty gold pieces at level one. If you lose your match, though, you get paid only twenty-five. Oh okay. Um, but you don't die. But you don't die. So that's pretty good. But, but as far as tactics you go, you can kind of you can summon. You can use summons. You can punch cool people in the groin. You can. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and in fact, in their eyes. <laughs> that's kind of the idea here is that on your side of these battles, fighting dirty is the is the rule. It oh, okay. is the norm. Like win at all costs make this as hard as possible mm -hmm. for them um, the only rule that is brought up is you do not endanger spectators sure yeah. so things that are forbidden are anything fireballs yeah like fireballs Explosive, where the yeah. radius <laughs> extends into the stands that kind of thing some um, kind of charm where everyone is under your command. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Uh, yeah, turning everyone into a zombie right. in the crowd <laughs> to attack your opponent. Mm. Okay, fair enough. But otherwise, not really. You have to stay in the arena, in the confines of the arena, uh, and your tactics cannot put uh, audience members at risk. Okay. That's essentially it. Okay. Um, there is a situation in which the match ends based on time uh it's very rare but uh in a situation where the combatants are evenly matched and 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 uh, it's basically right around 45 minutes when they run out of time the Sinoc referee or overseer will call it and in that case it is the gold uh, side that wins. Oh, no, I thought yeah. I thought there was gonna be some kind of very controversial point system or something. Nope. That no one understands. <laughs> the the honor path side, uh, basically all the disadvantages are piled on them. Oh, okay. 
So on the flip side, it is explained to you, Freya, uh, that uh, that this is the case. Mm -hmm. So there's full transparency here. Uh, yep. You know that anyone you face uh, will not be subject to any rules. Uh, however, the difference is that you are reminded that uh, you must win uh, within the time allotted by killing or knocking mm -hmm. out because they won't die, uh, but uh, terminating, ending your opponents uh, before the time expires. And you are just gently reminded that you are on the honor path. So it is not only the result of the fight, but how you choose to fight that will be observed. And it is possible and even common for folks, for, for fighters on the honor path to defeat their opponents and still lose. Uh, so shady tactics are not tolerated. Ray's not a huge shady tactic kind of fighter. Not not a huge concern for <laughs> no. your style, no. but it is uh, it's something that they take time to say, particularly yeah, because good. you are uh, an outsider. Yeah, um, no, that is good. No, she's mostly you know, bash, bash, mm -hmm. bash some more. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you want to get in here, get mad. Bash me, things. okay? No, I'll oh. bash you back. It's not, bash. It's not gonna be an issue. Um. You also learn about your match. So your match is taking place at high noon. Uh, you are set to face a Knoll Packmaster. Ooh, and, that's kind of cool. Uh, a Knoll Packmaster? Packmaster, yeah. And you are only told that uh, the Packmaster comes with beasts. So that's the information you have. Okay. And you're told to prepare to fight a, the Knoll, a Knoll Packmaster and his beasts. Potum, mm. uh, when you make your way to the arena, um, it's certainly past dawn at this point, uh, but my guess is still on the early side because you don't know when your friends are competing and you're going to want to see these matches and secure your bets and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's probably where I would Potum would go first is to check the schedule and then mm -hmm. place the bets. Yeah. So... Um, the when is when's the big guy that uh, that got he through? is he is not fighting today. Oh, Stendar. Uh, That's lame. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Stendar will fight. Oh no, I'm sorry. He is no, he is fighting today. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, because he has to he has to work his way through every level. In my head, I was thinking he would would just jump, but no, he yeah. has he has to grind his way. He has to grind his way back to the top. So he will fight today. That's a good question um, about when. So first, as you're leaving the inn, the the guys that you talked to yesterday, that sort of uh, like we described them sort of merchant class, mm -hmm. uh, fantasy football bros yep. uh, that you met in the bar, they, they all leave early as well, and they're headed to a certain gate in the arena. So you can follow them and kind of hang yeah, in that zone or you can go off and find a different gate uh, gates for for the audience there are four of them uh, at each cardinal direction there's lots of places you could enter um, well so I would like to do two things one yes I would like to hang out uh, hang with the bros uh, mm -hmm. so that so that we can make a little money yeah um, but then also it would be I'm going to ask the bros if there's a chance that um, there's a place that I can go and see the fighters before they go out. Oh, I'm, sure. Essentially, I'm trying to meet up with both of them. Yeah. Just qu ever so quickly. So you are told uh, that... So they'll they'll tell you right away um, that the, the fighters are not constrained prior to their matches. They just have to show up. Mm. On time, so they're like, if you're trying to meet up with specific people, hang out outside their gate and see if they come out, or you know, catch someone as they're walking in. And stuff yeah, like, that. like yeah. that's the easiest way. Um, but they do say if you're looking to evaluate fighters that don't know you, uh, that there's a spot, basically a spot where they go hang out, and it's it is basically outside this gate. It's outside the gate that Freya entered. Sure. And it's the uh, again the equivalent of like. At an NFL football game, 
lining up outside where the team buses pull up. Sure. And all the fans are trying to mm-hmm. snap a picture as they walk in with their headphones. Like it's that, it's mm-hmm. that kind of thing. The difference is that fighters show up all throughout the day. So once you've checked the schedule, you might have an idea of when to like post up and hope to see people. Um, <coughs> but at each of these two gates, at the honor gate and the gold gate uh, for fighters, there is a large well-armed minotaur guard posted up. You could engage that person in conversation if you wanted to as well. Um, yeah, okay. So uh, now that I've saved my seat. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going uh, to, and I know that Air is fighting first because of the schedule. Mm-hmm. Um, I am just going to go and try to find her. Okay. And if I find Freydissa along the way, great. Sounds um, good. And so, yeah, if I have to talk to that Minotaur, even better. Yeah, so he, uh, <laughs> he's definitely, <laughs> he, sees, he sees you when he comes up. Uh, but he definitely, like, kind of puts this very long polearm axe on the ground in front of you as you're walking up as to sort of block the door uh, and says, uh, do you have a seal? No, I don't even have a kitten at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> this gate is only for paid fighters. If you don't have a seal, I can't allow you in. I, I, I guess I don't necessarily need to go in if I could just have a a fighter or two come out. <clears throat> Who are you possible? looking for? Um, I'm looking for Aaron, Freya Dissa. All right. Rogar's daughter, Freya Dissa. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> um, why don't you make a, a persuasion check to see if you can convince this guy to leave his post and go uh, an errand for you? Oh, maybe I'll okay. Five. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't seem really interested. Um, <laughs> He, so he looks at you and, goes, and says, if you want to talk to somebody inside, you can wait until they come out, or you can see them when they fight. Great. Is there a, a, any other way that I could see them before they fight? <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he kind of shrugs. You can try catching like someone... Like another fighter who does have a seal while they're like walking in and be like, hey, if you're fucking in. Right, well, that was going to be the next one. It was he's just going to like stand around and wait yeah, for the group to come in and then you know, just sl- kind of slide in in between them because he's small. He is he's little. He is small. That's he's really true. little. Um, Bottom, what are you doing here? Are you fighting? <laughs> okay, so you are, your attempt is going to be to sneak in to the Gold Gate. Yeah. Okay. Uh,. All right, make a... Fighters are going to come in, in here at a, enough of a frequency that we don't need to worry about when. Um, why don't you make an intelligence check to see how effectively you decide who to align yourself with as you walk in, to spot your moment. Oh, seven. Start rolling, uh, yeah. Rolling in <clears throat> All right. So... You wait around and and you that was see rough for the plus five. Yeah. Only get oh, seven. Yeah. You see, um, about five or ten minutes later, you're kind of sitting back and waiting, and you see uh, a pretty large and heavily scarred uh, knoll approaching the gate, uh, and you can tell he's beelining for this, and you think, all right, this is my moment, and so you dart up and kind of position yourself on the other side of this knoll where you're where blocking sight of the Minotaur. Um, why don't you make a stealth check at disadvantage? Uh, because this this knoll is walking a lot faster than you thought, and uh, and there's another fun thing that happens. Oh, 13. So bad. Okay. That's something. 13's not terrible. So the thing that happens that, that causes you uh, to have less a less stealthy approach than you thought uh is that as you position yourself right behind this knoll uh all of a sudden a for you very large dog appears out of nowhere right next to you not appears like runs up behind you Mm -hmm. like just physically pop like it's there and it starts barking at you (laughs) and then another one 
pops up right in front of you and you sort of run into it and then they both disappear and appear again in front of this knoll oh dear <laughs> and they're barking and yipping and whatnot uh now this causes chaos it doesn't immediately identify you but it does draw some attention to the fact that there's something behind this knoll and so now the minotaur is going to roll perception and see if he spots you you had a 13 and that's an 18. <laughs> so pretty quickly the minotaur uh just sort of looks over the knoll's shoulder and goes you again what are you doing I was petting the dogs. <laughs> At this, the knoll... I told you I didn't have a seal or a kitten, but now there's some dogs here. <laughs> and when you say that, the knoll turns around and looks at you and says, Oh, you like dogs? <laughs> I love dogs. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> These are my blink dogs. Uh, I raised them from puppies. This is Marco, and this is Rubio. <laughs> Oh, I don't know if I like their names. <laughs> They're really nice. The blink dogs do not look nice. <laughs> Everyone thinks their dogs are nice. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Everyone, every dog and everything. They're super nice. friendly. They yeah, are yeah. so friendly. As they both close in on you and start to growl. <laughs> wow, they never bite. That's yeah, so weird. Never they never, never oh, like no, this. No, no, yeah, don't never, they don't no. jump. <laughs> yeah, they're so quiet. Well, the, the, I, her husband, Dan, posted a video of, like... All of these dogs just knocking children over. <laughs> oh, like being excited and knocking children over. I kind of imagine that these are, that's what these dogs are doing to pop. Yeah. Just kind of knocking them. Yeah, over. definitely, <laughs> definitely shoulder <laughs> shoulder checking you. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna uh, turn to the knoll and just um, ask him politely if uh, he can uh, have my friends come out. Uh, yeah, make a make a persuasion check. I understand that you're really busy and your dogs are ugly. I mean, yeah. and I'm sure that you have absolutely no time to help me out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just no. try to get a note to my friends. This is just, it's not, it's just not it's going painful. well. No, nope. it's just not going well. Should probably go back to my friends at this point. <laughs> or, uh, your not even my friends, <laughs> the bros. Um. So let. Like let the, me uh, let me ask this. Um, putting this scene on pause yeah. as it devolves. Maybe Air hears some commotion. Well, <laughs> uh, what I guess what I want to ask, you've already sort of defined for me that you're hanging out here because you want to catch the first match. Yeah, I'm going to lay the land. Yeah. Planning to leave. Uh, so this is my DM's gift to you. Just make a perception check. Sure. <laughs> Seventeen. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Uh, all right, I with a seventeen, I think I I am comfortable saying, oh, you wow. hear Potom's voice. <laughs> da, like this is not a like a deep into the like it's just down the hall. You Potom's yeah. voice echoes. Uh, you hear the yipping of dogs and Potom yeah, yeah. making a fair amount of noise. So if you want to go greet Potom, you're welcome to do that. Yeah, I think Air does. I mean, I think Potom has a very identifiable <laughs> voice, and I think Air would be. Sure, would like to uh, see. I think I think maybe her first thought is that Pod may come to to also compete, and she was confused by that. So she'll definitely go and see what the commotion is and see Potom. Okay. And yeah, what are you doing here, Potom? <laughs> I've I've come to, um. Well, you know, help my bet along. So I see. <laughs> would you like offense or defense? Uh, Air looks at um, She pauses uh, and then says offense. It's very... <laughs> um, uh, can, I, can I just see your sword for a moment? Oh, sure. And then she... Uh, yeah, she produces her, her... Or she takes her hand out with, with, um, with nothing in it, but then the sword kind of appears mm -hmm. in her hand um, in front of Potom. Potom will just, you know, <clears throat> pull out... A, Trinket <laughs> that he just always has his sure. little, you know, uh, and makes a just an ever so slight uh, adjustment, and your sword is now uh, plus one for an in, uh, enhanced weapon. Mm -hmm. 
So this magic weapon grants uh, plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls uh, made with it. Oh, attack and damage. Mm -hmm. So plus oh, one yeah. to both. How is it? Is uh, if oh. you run into Freya, will you send her out for a moment? Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we'll do. Excellent. We can talk about this later, but logistically, but um, as a rules question, my sword is already a plus one. Yeah. Oh, so how does it that not stack? Does that it no? does not stack. All Sorry. right, give me your non-magical <laughs> weapon. <laughs> oh, I, oh, this is magical already. I can't do anything with this. You may have, it, this you, already looks really good. This, this is really it's good. Like a really good weapon. There may be good reason to retcon that if you would have. You may have noticed. Or yeah, may, no, I, I'm, I'm sure that he that. Yeah. Yeah, he would have definitely know, knew that. Like, I can't improve this. What? Much. What's, yeah. No, no, no. Give me your give me your non magical <laughs> weapon. <laughs> your secondary weapon. Uh, let me think here. What what, what, what can I give you that'd be useful? Um, otherwise, otherwise, you can pick defense, and I'll give you a plus one to you. Uh, sure. Air is like maybe defense would be better. Okay, so um, when I know that you're just wearing a breastplate, and so Potom does the same little. Um, and now your uh, armor class is plus one. Nice, nice. This is I'm gonna be. I don't. I you may. I don't know if you calibrate it correctly here. It's saying it'll be pretty hard to hit. We'll find out. <laughs> uh, you may be underestimating <laughs> Minotaurs. We'll Maybe. find out. We'll find out. Uh, all right, very good. Uh, so I will tell you, uh, you know that the Honor Path Gate and the Gold Path Gate are on opposite sides of the arena. Okay. Oh. So I think you don't have, you wouldn't bother to ask oh. Air to send oh. Freya out because mm -hmm. you know they're nowhere near each other. Okay. Yeah. I don't think I can get to air. Let me answer my idea. I know. I was just hoping that uh, it would be a shortcut, but <sighs> little legs don't fail me now. <laughs> I wish I had one of those blink dogs to ride. <laughs> that would be amazing. What if Pop started riding a blink dog in battle? It's, I, uh, it's kind of why I wanted a, a mastiff several episodes ago. Oh, that's right. So that, uh, that he could... <laughs> a blank Mastiff. <laughs> so good. A ma so that he could ride a Mastiff into battle. But he also has a steel defender that... It's like, it's just like a labyrinth. Right? I didn't think about <laughs> that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so good. Great steed. Oh, uh, I love it. Um, okay. So, I think what, uh, I think what happens is when you get to the other gate... It's made very clear to you that no one is allowed to enter this gate who is not on the honor path. Uh, there's there's no getting there's no getting to Freya unless she happens to come out. Uh, is there anyone going in? I mean, <laughs> I'm I'm at the edge of the arena, right? <laughs> well, know? I mean, you then, you tell me. Yeah, I'm at the edge of the you're arena. Not, I've been. You're you not um, competing until later, so would Freya be in there, like hanging out? Well, especially at the beginning, she's like really into the whole like I'm absorbing this entire arena as my <laughs> I'm, my meditation is encompassing this entire mm -hmm. arena. My my morning meditation. This is I'm one with the place. I'm one mm -hmm. with this. This is happening. So well, and Potom, you've the seen the day. schedule at this point, so you mm -hmm. know Freya's not fighting until like high noon. Right. So mm -hmm. you could potentially go watch matches and try to come find her later, yeah. or, or wave to me. Whatever. While I'm down there. <laughs> if I'm if I'm at the edge. How long does the bonus last? Just so I... until I take it off. Oh wow! Oh geez, pretty nice. That's pretty nice. Uh, all right. Well, let's let's flip into our arena then. Oh uh, yeah, this is a cool graphic. So as you, mm. <laughs> sound effects too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So as you step into the uh, the energy of the arena, as the um, temperature starts to heat up, as the day is as the sun is rising, um, Potom, you grab a seat with your uh, new bro friends, uh, who are getting really excited. They've got 
they've got notes in front of them uh, with like chalkboarded out all of these <laughs> elaborate bets that they've made with each other, uh, different prop bets about which specific person will use what tactic or who will get KO'd first and all this stuff. As a reminder, uh, you have 60 gold pieces mm -hmm. right now on uh, Freya to win. And one of the lifers needs to win. So you have a combo uh, prop bet that uh, is dependent on both Freya winning and uh, one of these lifers in this uh, level one uh, match winning. Uh, you also have a separate bet on air, mm. 10 mm. gold pieces. Uh, to win. And uh, Air, you have a bet on yourself to win. I don't know why that keeps popping up. I think it's loops, it is. but... Oh, that's very annoying. I don't... You may... Yeah, I don't know if there's... Fling. Probably a way to... Probably a way to do that differently. Maybe with a different player. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Or if you try doing the full screen. Yeah. Maybe that's... Maybe that'll be the secret. Uh, okay, anyway... Uh, so the first match is announced. Administrator Omari comes out and uh, her voice magically enhanced booms out to the crowd. It is, uh, it's not a full stadium <clears throat> yet. You get the sense that uh, the diehards are here for the first match of the day and the gambling addicts <laughs> and the and the gambling addicts but that that this will build probably throughout the day but the seats are probably 50 percent filled like this is um it's not empty by any means so she comes out and addresses the crowd and welcomes them reminds them of the purpose behind uh what they do uh she waxes eloquent for just a little while about uh, the Oshira and the purpose of the Path of Honor and the uh, importance of uh, what the Sinach does here in the in the temple and in the arena. But probably five minutes into her sort of speech, she recognizes the energy of the crowd and you can kind of get the sense that she cuts her comments a little short to get out of the way and let, let this commence. Mm -hmm. uh, and as she backs out of the arena... You see, walking into uh, the center of this sort of sandy uh, <clears throat> arena as the morning sun is starting to uh, land on it, uh, there is a, a group of three of these Minotaur youths, uh, including the one that you sort of quasi-teamed up with, Freya, um, whose name I already have forgotten. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tony. Tony. I think it was Tony the Minotaur. Yeah. That sounds See, about right. That feels right. Mm -hmm. uh, so you see your boy Tony out there. All right. right, Tony! You got this! <laughs> you got along this, with Tony! Two other Minotaurs. Um, and they are they are lightly armed and armored. Uh, so essentially, no armor. Um, but they do each have a buckler shield, uh, and each of them has a weapon of their choice. So one seems to be uh, armed with a trident. One is holding a, a short but very thick sword, uh, and the other is holding what looks like a war hammer. Uh, and they step into the arena and march to the center, and they sort of lift their arms up to the crowd, and those who are there get into it uh, and give out a cheer. Uh, and stepping out from Air's side of the stadium, uh, you see a group of uh, two elves and one tabaxi. Uh, and they, uh, in contrast to the Minotaurs, are rather heavily armed and armored. Uh, the tabaxi uh, is wearing very elaborately decorated leather armor, has a light crossbow strapped to its back uh, and a scimitar at its waist. Uh, one of the, uh, I said elves, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, one of the elves, it's hard to tell from a distance if they're full elf or half elf, uh, although one is a little stockier and is likely a half elf. Uh, one of the elves is dressed in a sort of very light uh, linen robes uh, with a little bit of uh, gold filigree at the wrists uh, and is holding nothing but a slender iron rod. And the other is uh, basically dressed in tight cloth garments uh, with their uh, fists sort of sparkling. It looks like there's maybe broken glass uh, on the wrappings around their knuckles okay. and their feet uh, are in light, but uh, light boots that clearly have uh, metal pieces attached to them. Uh, and they look pretty pretty muscly and pretty light on their feet. Uh, and those three stride into uh, the center of the arena. The two threesomes face each other. Uh, there is sort of a ritual greeting on the side of the honor path. And then with almost no fanfare, the crowd erupts in a loud roar as the fight begins in earnest. The This match is enlightening to all three of you. Uh, because at first glance, these three uh, mercenaries on the gold side appear much better prepared. Uh, they look experienced. They even look dangerous. Um, and they have a plan, clearly, which they execute immediately. As soon as they know that the fight has begun, the three of them move into coordinated positions with the um, monk stepping forward to sort of take up space, uh, the tabaxi with their scimitar uh, stepping back and starting to sort of weave a hypnotic pattern in the air to sort of uh, drifting off to the right to create a distraction, and the magic user uh, taking five or ten steps back immediately and starting to weave their hands in the air and mumble some words. The three minotaurs, on the other hand, just lower their heads in charge. Oh, there is no strategy, coordination. Uh, they just yell out, they bellow, lower their heads, and run forward. And uh, for one of them, two of them, for two of them, that actually works out pretty well. Uh, so two of the Minotaurs lower their heads, race forward, and slam into uh, one into the monk, one into the ranger. Uh, the first goring the monk badly with their horn. It buries itself in his shoulder uh, and flings this guy up into the air, lands ten feet away. The... Uh, Ranger takes a more glancing blow, but is laid out flat on the ground and struggles to get up for a moment. Does, but is clearly uh, has clearly taken taken a bad hit. The third, though, who charges towards the magic user, uh, is just a little too far away, and this magic user gets their shot off uh, beforehand, uh, and you see a a single sort of uh, icy ray come blasting out of their fingertip, uh, which engulfs the uh, Minotaur's chest and sort of slows them down, and they kind of collapse to one knee before struggling to get back up. And you see chunks of ice kind of falling off mm. of their uh, bare chest as they try to shake off the pain of this attack. The battle goes on for about 15 minutes, and when I say it was enlightening for you, uh, what I mean by that is your initial uh, your initial evaluation of this fight is that these youth look untested, not strategic, their tactics are not sound, and they look like they're going to get their butts kicked. But they're tough. And five minutes into this, you start to think, oh, maybe this isn't going to go the way I thought thought it was going to go. And 10 minutes into this, the, a big section of the crowd is on their feet, really excited about this because the tide has 
seemed to turn. The ranger is down, uh, unconscious. The monk is leaping back and forth, trying to avoid blows from two minotaurs who now have him surrounded. And the magic user is floating about 10 feet in the air uh, to avoid being taken down and is just kind of peppering cantrips down at the remaining minotaur who is launching their trident up over and over again at this magic user trying to take them down. Mm-hmm. And at about the 15 month, or about the 15 minute mark, uh, the sort of momentum has caught up with these mercenaries. Uh, the magic user has a trident buried in his chest and loses concentration and falls to the ground. A member of the Synoc is quickly there to uh, begin healing. And the monk is basically just buried under 600 pounds of minotaur flesh and is getting pummeled. Uh, And very quickly after that, it's over. So what you take away from this initial match is... uh, Minotaurs are tough. Minotaurs are tough. <laughs> they they just bring a lot of meat mm-hmm. to the arena. And they can take a lot of damage. Yeah. They, they just seem to soak up hits uh, over and over and over again and get back up and lower those horns and charge. I think for air in particular, it's just a little shocking. You've seen minotaurs fight mm-hmm. before, Freya. So it's not a total shock to you. But after watching these sort of kids compete yesterday air i think you you probably went into it sort of thinking like eh, you know but these kids are scary yeah they're a little they're a little intimidating yeah oh well we'll, we'll see what happens we'll see what happens <laughs> we'll see what happens um and as that match wraps uh there's sort of an intermission the crowd goes to get snacks to cash yep. in wagers whatever and uh one of the sanak priests uh approaches you and your squad and sort of says prepare yourselves yeah uh, it will be your turn next mm-hmm. uh, anything you want to do before you uh begin your match well i think you're right i think air is a little um taken aback by the situation and does grab her n- new teammates mm. And tries to get a better sense. It tries to asks asks them explicitly about what their what their experience is and what, if they have a, if they have a, what their plan is going into this. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you uh, you pick up immediately that these two do not know each other. They've mm-hmm. just been assigned to this. Mm-hmm. Um, the one who is holding two daggers isn't real sharp, uh, and what Perfect. they basically express to you is really like to stab stuff okay okay uh, we can work with that we can work these with that. knives are these <laughs> knives are sharp i like to put the pointy end in people okay, okay. Uh, that's basically my plan i'm gonna go out there and put the pointy end in people over and over again uh they do seem they do strike you as quick okay. so this this one uh you know you're you're thinking glass cannon here mm-hmm. uh, is kind of the vibe like if they get hit it's over if they right. if they take a hit but if you could get them positioned in a way that they could put the stabby end in, in yeah, a minotaur yeah. a couple times, they're going to get a lot of those in, uh, and they maybe are a little dodgy. Yeah. Uh, the other guy has uh, a short sword that he picked up in this back room. He looks way out of his depth. Mm-hmm. This guy's reading to you 100% like a decoy. Okay. That's okay. your professional battle assessment. Okay. Uh, this guy is... you. <laughs> be really great if this guy could take a hit or two before uh, and that's all we're gonna get out of him <laughs> yeah um yeah i think air takes the it takes the time to instruct the stabby stabby guy mm-hmm. um and maybe this is already clear to him but maybe not that he should try to let the minotaurs uh um Try to get it into position himself. So try to let the Minotaurs either uh, engage with me or or this other dude, and um, and then position himself uh, in a kind of a flanking. And maybe I, maybe Eric gives a brief lesson of flanking. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> and and then tries to like uh, instill that idea. And then he, and then Eric turns to the other guy and goes like, you know what? Just do your best. 
Just do your best. <laughs> hey, man. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck out there. Uh, can, uh, Freya happens to notice that, oh, I, I, I think this is probably the time that air's going to go. So I think it's so, I'm going to go out to the stands. I want to go oh, out okay. to the stands yeah. to see. Yeah, you definitely yeah. Uh, can definitely watch. All right, we'll see if this other player isn't obnoxious. Okay, so let's uh, let's get into this. We have uh, air. You can place yourself and your two teammates out sure. here where you please. And we entered from this side. Is that how that works? Or entered from um, this side? You're gonna enter from over there. Yeah, and the uh, the two Minotaur youths are gonna enter from this side. And for funsies, uh, for this combat, I'm going to ask Alex and Katie to pilot our two minotaurs. Oh, you got it. Oh, no. <laughs> I lied. I'm going to ask you to pilot our two NPC companions. Oh, you sure. Got it. Okay. I okay. want the stabby one. I will pilot the minotaurs. All right. Wait, what, what was the other one again? No, you're uh, decoy. The decoy. <laughs> yeah. he, he has a he has a borrowed short sword. He has a borrowed short sword and a buckler. <laughs> and a buckler. Okay. Uh, he is a level one fighter. Okay. Uh, Alex, you are piloting a level two rogue. Okay. With two stabby daggers. Here, I can. Here, you guys can. I'll let you guys place your own characters okay. if you like. <laughs> However, you feel the vibe of the decoy and the stabby stabby <laughs> would be. <laughs> Uh, that's perfect. <laughs> we're actually gonna be we're gonna turtle up. Hang on, right now. hang on, move over, move over. <laughs> mm. Okay, so uh, quick fun fact: your stabby stabby rogues' blades have actually been coated with a uh, single dose of sleep poison. Oh, perfect. Oh, nice. So, so should they? They have not mentioned that. Oh yeah, yeah. But <laughs> should they? Have, Still sharp. <laughs> <laughs> Not very, yeah. Should they manage to land a hit, there will be uh, a con save that might have a, a significant impact. Okay. So we'll deal with that when we get to it. Um, all of your attacks uh -huh. are a plus two to hit. Okay. All of your attacks are a plus three to hit. Okay. okay? And I'll worry about. I'll tell you about damage What's, and stuff like that if are, we get to it. Are there rules about casting magic before the match begins? Defensive spells. I assume that you can't do anything until, or you, you can, can do whatever. Oh, right. No. Um, like, once you walk, giving... once you walk into the arena, that's it. You can kind of do whatever you want. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you would have a round or two if there's stuff um, you want to do, like if you wanted to armor of Agathis or whatever. That's what I was gonna ask. Yeah. Totally legit. Yeah. Uh, let's just say, let's just call it a round of prep. Sure. I think is reasonable. Uh, all right. So yeah, we're gonna get into it. Yeah. So. For your prep round, uh, is that what you're doing? Uh, uh, Air is casting. Yeah, is going to cast a blur and then and also hex. I what are the rules about that? I can't because it is a bonus action and then an action. But I think there's a rule about casting two mat. You can't spells. cast two spells in a unless turn, it's a cantrip or something. Unless it's a cantrip. Okay, right. Then yeah. blur it is. Okay, <clears throat> so blur. Mm -hmm. So describe for your uh, friends here what it looks like as they're watching you from the stands or their their respective places yeah i think air i think um i think air's used this before and i think what it was was or at least now she places like her hand over uh, her heart on her chest and then her first her armor but then spreads out and then and, uh, eventually her entire um uh, image becomes blurred <laughs> and, it's, and it's hazy, and yeah, and it's kind of um, hard to pinpoint about where where she is in that in that space. Ooh, yeah, I think I drank too much last night. She's like for this blurry. morning. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, think I drank too much blurry. Blurry. Sweat breakfast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I I like the idea. I've always liked the idea that the blur spell. Um, Maybe not like not static blur. I mean, like yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. it's the the same optics almost as like uh, like heat. Like, oh, sure, uh, sure, like yeah. a heat mirage, mm -hmm. uh, kind of thing, but, oh, but more extreme. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's not like the Photoshop blur where exactly. it's like, "Oh, my vision is bad. Like, I, yeah. my prescription is wrong." But it's almost like ethereal, <laughs> something. Yeah, it's yeah. like it, there's waves of it almost where you I mean, think you've got them, but 
you can't be sure that you've got them pinned down. No, that's great. Uh, awesome. So you're blurred. Mm -hmm. uh, neither of the two of you would probably have anything necessarily to do in prep. Uh, so we're going to jump right into rolling initiative. Uh, so I'm going to ask each of you to uh, roll initiative. And again, it'll be a plus two and a plus three. Basically for every bonus, plus two and plus three for these these folk. That's a 20. A 20, <laughs> nice. Eric rolls a six, unfortunately. She was a little too... Yeah, okay. Too well, you're, you're holding out for the decoys. To yeah, 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 yeah. Like, we'll see what, let's see what these Intentional yeah, 12. hesitation, 12. All right, very good. And we'll roll these minotaurs. Minotaurs rolled real bad. Uh, so I think these two step forward. Um, they are... They're, they don't look scared, but they definitely... These are both youth from this test yesterday. They both look hesitant. Mm -hmm. um, neither of these, you you wouldn't know this, but neither of these two watched the first match. They, they were both uh, in the, in the uh, honor path locker room trying to get themselves psyched up. <clears throat> so they're still very much like... How's this going to go? What do we do here? Are we ready for this? Um, and they just sort of sit back and wait to see what you all are going to do. Uh, with that said, decoy fighter, you act first. What is this person going to do? I, th I think I'm just going to take the proverbial bull by the horns and run <laughs> right up to the first one. <laughs> I got like 30. Like Take one. inspiration for that terrible pun. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Like 30? Do I go like 30? Yeah, you can go six. You can go six squares. Okay, I'll go right up here. And I'll be like, hey! <laughs> okay, yeah, good. Um, so you can either, you have inspiration, which means you can uh, take uh, you can take advantage on any role you choose one uh -huh. time. Um, you can either make an intimidation check here and have that be your action to try okay. to intimidate these minotaurs <laughs> or this can just be flavor and you can ready an action to do something when the minotaurs get within your range that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna ready an action with my i have a short sword mm -hmm. you said i'm gonna ready an action with my short sword okay very good so you charge forward make some noise get big yeah uh like you're facing a bear in the woods yeah. and your head, <laughs> pull out your short sword yeah. and get ready to to hit so one. just waving around <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, i like it the crowd the yeah, crowd, crowd is yeah, the crowd's into it the crowd's yeah. on your side for sure thank you thank you uh, are you not in <laughs> yes yes um stabby stabby rogue you're up um well uh I imagine that... I will note that as a level 2 rogue, as a bonus a bonus action, you do have the ability to dash, hide, or dodge. Oh, uh, well, and that was what... And disengage. Or disengage. Which... Dash, disengage, or, which is, or hide. Which is very useful sometimes. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So with that, I think that I will just uh, ready an attack option... But then also bonus action hide behind the pillar. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Love it. Uh, roll. Kind stealth. of all of a sudden you turn to like look to say something to me like wow she's really <laughs> wow she's really uh, being that decoy and then be like oh wait wait where, okay, where, where did I? <laughs> uh, do, do bonus action hide. <coughs> well, how does a five work? <laughs> so bad. <laughs> it works so bad. And a two is probably worse. They, well, they, they get a plus yeah. three to everything. They see so. you next to a pillar, and then they see you <laughs> just like <laughs> walk behind it or something. Can't see me. I wonder, I wonder where you went. Can't see me. So I'm doing great. I'm doing really good, you guys. Why did I wear flannel today when I totally should have worn rock color? <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Oh, dearie, dear. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, so that's your bonus action. Any you want to hold an action? Or yeah, I'll action? also I'll hold the attack action for waiting for somebody to come close. Sleep, 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 sleep. Stab. Awesome. All right. So with with the stabby stabby rogue in position, uh, now the one of these minotaurs is going to act. Uh, that's this minotaur. Uh, this minotaur is armed uh, with again, just like the others. Uh, carrying a buckler, no armor of consequence. Um, this minotaur is holding a um, 
uh, what to any normal, like a normal size humanoid, a human would be a long sword, but looks a little shorter in their hand. Uh, they're wielding it one handed. They're going to step forward and engage with our uh, decoy. Uh, before they can make their attack, you have a held action. Uh, uh, do you want to use your inspiration to attack at advantage here? Yeah, I might as well. Go for I it. I don't think I'm going to be around that long. Go, go for it. <laughs> 19. I uh, roll plus, twice. Plus two. Plus two. So 21. Yeah. 21. Oh, wait, that's a Eight player thing, and right? ten. So 21. We'll take a 21. 21 definitely hits. So uh, with your short sword, you're going to do 1d6 plus two points of damage. 1d6 plus two. Okay, hold up. <laughs> 1d6 plus two. Ooh, watch oh, this! Yeah. <laughs> that's not bad. <laughs> 1d6 <laughs> I mean, for a level two. one fighter, it's... Five. Five. Total. Five that's damage. Solid. That's all damage. That's solid I mean, that's damage. more than we yeah. expected the decoy to do, let's all be yes. honest. Um, nice. So the Minotaur yeah. takes a, uh, a pretty good slash across his thigh. Gotcha! <laughs> yeah. yeah! And the crowd the crowd is, is with you. They are in full support of this. Um, however, now the Minotaur is going to take uh, oh, crap. his attack. <laughs> uh, oh, it's going to gonna hoist up this long sword uh, and that is a, a 15 to hit which does hit your fighter um, and what, they what, what do I what what is I think we're gonna call your fighters armor, armor class 14 which is generous. That's pretty generous you got a buckler yeah, you got a buckler from the locker room that's helping okay uh, Shields plus two to armor class, so that's oh, pretty good. Uh, but you are going to take. Oh, it's not a it's not a terrible hit, but it's seven points of slashing damage, uh, which brings you down to thirteen hit points. Dang, you're gonna, you're gonna die before you can even get over there. Okay. Um, it's all right. <laughs> it's okay. I got five points of damage in. It's okay. I get, paid, uh, I get paid even if I lose. And so. at this point. Air, it is your turn. Okay. You've gotten the lay of the land. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, Air is going to uh, cast Hexblade's Curse uh, on the one that's engaged with uh, with her okay. with her teammate here. I'm gonna refer to that. That is Minotaur A. Okay, Minotaur A and the curse. So that's just the um, two points of damage, extra points of damage. That's the bonus action one? The bonus action yeah. one. Okay. Yep, and then it doesn't move. Uh, you can't, or I can't move it between creatures. Uh, critical hit roll for 19 or 20, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, huh. One, two, three, four, five. I mean, part of me wants to just like walk up there and stab him okay <laughs> stick him with the pointy end stick him with the pointy end <laughs> do you have enough movement to flank i don't unless i don't i don't think so because i think that's as far as i yeah. can go if you can't get to to their back then no. yeah yeah even, right. a, even a generous reading of <laughs> of that it, yeah it's not gonna work unfortunately that's what i was hoping for but now yeah well yeah. too late now okay Let's see if this if, if this decoy works. didn't charge up so aggressively yeah 20 <laughs> 20 hits, yeah. Yeah, well done. You can do your damage there. That's 17 damage. Ooh. That's a big... I'll, ha I'll have you know. That's a big wicked hit. I'll have you know. Um, all right. All blurred out. I'll <laughs> yeah, so blurry air comes uh, like a flash up right next to this fighter. And I think it's, um, I think it's kind of subtle. I think it's not obvious to the crowd just how badly right. you've yeah. wounded because your blade look easy. flashes <laughs> out so quickly and the blur kind of makes it not obvious from a distance what you've done. But a spray, like a blood spray, goes flying up and paints the ground to the right of this minotaur. Yeah. Bottom and prayer are like, oh, you got him. Yeah, she who, got him. She got him who, good. <laughs> who bellows loudly in pain. This Minotaur is hurt. Uh, that was a big, big hit for them. 
and and the crowd is likes that they mm -hmm. like that uh, experience so you get a you get a big cheer there um anything else i think that's everything Movement. i think that's everything i got yeah. yeah okay i got more tricks on my sleeve but not this turn minotaur b is going to uh heft uh they are holding a, a two-handed warhammer they they uh in one hand uh they have a shield as well they're going to move one two three four uh they seem a little more they're a little more intentional than the first match you watched uh and they are going to get on your back um what am i doing uh, to, 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 to it's, the, it's the first two minotaur yeah. minotaurs that went through that helped were trying to <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they're, they're friends they're uh, uh so they're going to attack they with their uh with that big warhammer okay it's a disadvantage so a straight roll uh because oh, okay. they're flanking you oh sure. uh but that is a nine to hit okay well so they no miss good. uh so they they swing this massive blow and I think uh, they are like kind of celebrating as they swing, like yeah, like, and it just passes through what they thought was you, and it's not. Um, Blair's doing work, but it's such a heavy swing that you feel the wind of it mm -hmm. on your cheek, uh, and and they just kind of overcompensate and spin past. Uh, but that's it. That's all they've got on their turn. Uh, so back to the top of the round. Okay. It is our fighter's turn. Well, I I'm gonna I am gonna flank him. If I go like up here, yeah, right? Sure. Or, or you yeah, go, yeah, get around to the back. Here. Yeah, yeah. Hundred percent. to the back. Okay. All and right. attack with your short sword. Just you can do so at advantage. Okay. Yeah, good thing, because that was a two, and a five. Yeah. <laughs> Six seven. Six seven. Yeah. Seven's not enough. Uh, <laughs> Darn. So, but you do you create a little bit of distraction here as mm -hmm. you circle back around and you swing, but they manage to move their shield and uh, knock your blade to the side. Uh, stabby, stabby rogue, you are hiding back there behind the pillar. Five, ten, 15, 20, 25, they don't know. 30. I'm going to take a flying leap and oh. jump onto the back, sinking down. Both daggers okay. in as I leap. And... I like this. We're going to go risk-reward on this. Perfect. Okay. So <laughs> Not my character. I don't care. No. So yeah. Oh, now you can really have fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> make an acrobatics check with a DC. I'm gonna, and you get a plus three on everything. Uh, we're going to say the DC is... They're not facing you. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say or, the DC yeah. is... And 14. Shouldn't I be able to attack at advantage since I am well, technically front of flanking? Wait for it. Okay. So. Hold. <laughs> the acrobatics check, uh, the DC of 14, will determine whether you get uh, an advantageous strike. I gotcha. With this attack. 18. I got an 18. Ooh. Definitely then. All right. So you come racing out, realizing you're not well concealed. But this Minotaur is focused on air, and you see your opening. So you come out and leap from five feet away, both daggers up in the air, and plunge down. Uh, now I want you to roll your attack at advantage. And the the extra advantage I'm giving you is that with a hit, both daggers hit. Okay. Uh, that was a are gonna do extra die damage. in the okay. corner because Start we were at fresh. an angle. So here we go. At advantage. Nine. Seventeen. Seventeen hits. So, both daggers plunge into this minotaur's back, high up on their shoulders, like between the shoulder blades. Uh, almost like uh, pythons when you're climbing. Just right, right. And you yank yourself up with the daggers. Um, so you're going to do... Uh, you're going to do... We're going to call this a crit. So I want you to roll 2d4 damage. And then we're going to add... You can use this one if you want. 2d4 damage, and then we're going to add 8 to that. 5 plus 8 is 13. Plus your plus 3 bonus uh, for each attack. So that's 19 points of stabby stabby damage 
to this Minotaur. And then Sleepy Sleepy? Yes. So now the Minotaur needs to roll a constitution saving throw. This is not a high-end sleeping potion, uh, sure. poison. Uh, so the DC <laughs> is only 12. Some like uh, magic store trick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, DC 12 is not, not the no, worst. No, no, no. Um, but the uh, they have a constitution modifier of plus 3. Tough. That's a 13. Oh, just they barely. Just, no. just saved. Uh, so, but you stabbed them twice. Uh, for really big damage. <laughs> yeah. That was, yeah. With two daggers? 19 dead points yeah, of damage yeah. for two daggers? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Pretty awesome. Yeah. It was a double crit. <laughs> it's like you slashed both of their renal arteries as you went it's in. It's really bad. It's really bad. <laughs> yeah. and, and suddenly, this Minotaur is looking just as rough as the other one, uh, they're in bad shape. On my little encounter tracker here, they both have a red mist over their faces. Oh, oh. Yeah. oh. That's, that's, it's, that's not good. It's, yeah, it's not good for them. Uh, all right, well done. Well, your uh, allies are performing way better yeah, than I, I anticipated. <laughs> um, <laughs> than they yeah. anticipated. And yeah, now I mean, it is Minotaur A's turn. It's not a bad setup, to be honest. Yeah, you know, Minotaur A is... Uh, enraged and is going to uh they're going to stay focused on air uh but they are going to make a reckless attack with mm -hmm. their um with their weapon so they and you're still blurry i am so that makes it a straight roll oh well they don't need a reckless attack because you're flanked still actually so well you tell me what to do yeah uh anyway that's a 19 to hit Yep. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> no. I have 18 AC, which is oh which feels man, really high. that's close. Uh, so you're gonna take 1d12 plus four slashing damage, which is gonna be nine points of slashing damage. Okay, and then I have to, and then there's a concentration spell. Oh, okay, yeah. So make a Constitution said, saving throw. You said nine, right? Nine points of damage. Yeah. So if it's a ten or higher, we'll save on this. I get, but I do get advantage, which is nice. Oh, nice. We have Warcaster. No, I range? get it. How do I get that? How did I get that? I get it from something. No, I got it. From, it's a it's a warlock. Um, it's a warlock thing. Oh, nice. What is, I forget what it's called, though. Yeah. Um, actually, I'll just roll. Wow, another cock die. Eight. Fifteen. Okay, no problem. So you hang on to blur. Uh, but you do take nine points of slashing damage. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, and then I think uh, this Minotaur is going to make an ill-advised move. And they are going to... One, two, three, four, five, six. They're going to move away. So each of you may make an attack of opportunity. Yeah, um, and I also have the, the Booming Blade cantrip, which I use. That's just like my normal attack. Um, and I just wanted to reread this real quick because there's something about this. If a target willingly moves five feet or more before than the target, oh, you, oh, there is actually no roll for it. You just take one d8 thunder damage. Oh, okay. Uh, I need you to announce that when you oh. make the attack. Okay, I can remind. Yeah, just I just need you to remind me. Yeah, but yeah. that's fine. You can roll it, roll it. But in the future, just remind me that that's a thing. Sure. Not like they wouldn't know. Yeah, it's a uh, cantrip, so I just use it every time. Yeah. Well, one. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> and, uh, well, uh, I don't even know if I have anything that I can... Well, you can just roll a normal attack. attack. Oh, I also oh, get it. It's an attack, attack of opportunity. Yeah, oh, you, attack of yeah. opportunity. So just a, regular, a just a regular attack, whatever, plus two. All right. Um, 14. Uh, 14 just hits. 14 so hits. you can roll your one d six plus two. My one, I will try. We'll try my uh, metal one. Church my hand to roll, and that is a six. five. Oh, five. Five, six, seven. Seven. Oh man, yeah. decoy really showing up. Yeah. What'd you do? I, I, I mean, I can reroll. I rolled early, but I can reroll if you want. No. Okay. Twenty six. That, that hits. Yep. Do your damage. <laughs> um, my my combination of wait. No, that's... <laughs> no, Matt does want you to re-roll. Yeah, yeah, no, I changed my mind. Re-roll. Re I didn't like that one. Uh, 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 
13. 13 points of damage. Oof. Uh, this Minotaur greatly regrets. Running their, away? Uh, well, he wasn't running away, <laughs> okay. but he regrets his tactics. <laughs> yeah. He instantly regrets his tactics. <laughs> Run away! Uh, and Air, it is now your turn. Okay. Um... <clears throat> Air is going to cast Armor of Agathos. Okay. And Air is also going to... Oh, it's so cool. So I'm using the D&D Beyond Encounter Tracker mm -hmm. for the first time today. Your armor class just updated when you mm -hmm. cast that spell. Like, it updated live in my encounter tracker. Oh, it doesn't Sweet. change my armor class. You mean health? Oh. Maybe that's just delayed. Wait. <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe not. What did, what did it change to? But actually? when you did something, you have an armor class of 18 right now. Yeah. I had added, I had manually added, maybe it was just delayed or something. Maybe that's what just happened. But I just saw it update, and I was like, oh, did oh. you, like, just click something? But no, you're right. Armor of, armor of Agathis doesn't increase your armor class. Yeah. But it just updated based on your changes in your character. Yeah. Yeah, it's just I like, do see live updates of your hit points. That's cool. Which is neat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause I wonder. What, I wonder if it's delayed. Because I was kind of screwing around. I was trying to figure out how best to sh how to best to enter that. And I wonder if that's why I was like. I don't know. Who knows? Oh, yeah. yeah. How many hit points? How many hit points do us decoys have? Twenty each. 20 uh, fighter decoy is down to thirteen because oh. they took a took a hit. Um, They're not climbing a minotaur wall right now. <laughs> Untouched. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think I can really. I don't think I any. I don't have any cool other bonus action things, unfortunately. Oh, I forgot to say bonus action. Hide. <laughs> can't see me. <laughs> bonus action. Hide. <laughs> I'm behind him. He can't see me. And that's it. Just fire right. position. Yeah, I like it. Uh, all right. So it's Minotaur B's turn. Uh, he's right in front of you. Uh, you're still blurry. Mm -hmm. This, I mean, this Minotaur's biggest problem right now is the double daggers in its back. <laughs> um, you're not still hanging there, I will say that. Uh, oh, I'm not? No, that's not going to be a thing. But they, you pull the daggers out, you fall down, you're standing behind. Okay. Um, but it is, that Minotaur is going to whip around and uh, is going to attack you. Uh, is going to attack you recklessly with its Warhammer. Mm -hmm means it gets advantage that's a natural 20. Uh, however every attack on that minotaur for the next round is at advantage oh. just so everybody knows because it has attacked recklessly. Uh, I think in reaction to a very <laughs> surprising uh, attack <laughs> this minotaur is really freaked out and has whipped around uh, but it, it lands a devastating blow on stabby stabby rogue uh, with its warhammer. That is going to be 19 points of damage, <laughs> uh, taking you down to one, one wow. hit point. Yeah, that's... Is there red mist on my face now? <laughs> so much red mist, so much. It's actually just a bucket of blood. Yeah, yeah. I wow. got carried. Yeah, it's, it's bad. I mean, bad. you're still up, though. You're still, you're, yeah. you're standing. You're still on two feet. Really yeah. delivering on the decoy uh, objective. Uh, and that's all he's going to do. He's not going to move. He's just going to stand there and enjoy the fact that he just destroyed your whole face with a warhammer um and continue to fight off the effects of this poison uh, that are making him a little uh, drowsy fighter all right we're See going you. straight up there <laughs> going all right going back to that guy yeah concentrate uh, fire yeah yes. definitely flanked so okay. uh, make your attack at advantage and also, well, attack you'd get advantage anyway. anyway. Oh yeah, advantage yeah. anyway because of the reckless. Yep. Yeah. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Eighteen or sixteen. All right. <laughs> yep, that definitely hits. Do your one d six plus two. Uh, one d six. That is a two four. Okay. Very okay. Uh. Stabby Stabby Rogue, your whole face just got obliterated by a Warhammer, and this Minotaur definitely sees you. It's bad here. I can't die! 
<laughs> and we're going to just take both daggers and aim for the neck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, just straight jugular punch with both daggers. I love it. Make uh, make an attack. All right, is that advantage, as we discussed? Well, that's good, because that was a five. <laughs> of a 16. 16 hits. Uh, 1d4 plus 3. Five. Okay. Solid damage. damage. I, like, I like my teammates. Yeah, they're chipping yeah. away. They're chipping uh, away. They're not as worthless as I uh -huh. projected. Yeah. Um, uh, good roll. little so do good I rolls a, make a big difference. <laughs> do I get an offhanded because I have two? I'm double wielding. Yes, so you can make an two. offhand attack at yeah. advantage. Two weapon fighting. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a twenty or not a natty twenty. Yeah. Um, or well, the twenty. Yeah, that hits. So one d four and no bonus. One. <laughs> hey. Hey, it's one, one more. Hey, one damage is, damage is all that's between you and <laughs> right. <laughs> that's right. Right. the grave. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, bonus action disengage? No, your bonus action was attacking oh. with your offhand. Yep. Uh, Minotaur A is going to, that been the way to act go. <laughs> now. Uh, Minotaur A is going to lower their horns and they're going to charge. Shit. Uh, they are charging at Fighter. Oh, thank God. <laughs> um, that's, what, that's what Fighter said. Yep. Oh, oh God. Uh, so that is a gore... Pick me! Pick me! That is a gore attack. And that is a 19 plus 4, 23. So that, that definitely, hits. definitely hits. Ouch. Ouch. Uh, <laughs> and that is going to be 4d8 of piercing damage. With, I just rolled two eights, yeah, yeah. and a, a third eight, and a one. Uh, <laughs> so, the, so that's more than thirteen. Yeah. <laughs> that's where the but, yeah. but that's twenty-five <laughs> points plus four, twenty-nine <laughs> points of piercing damage. Uh, yeah, you definitely slide halfway across the. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you are obliterated <laughs> by the horns of this minotaur. And the crowd loves that too. They yeah. love everything you're doing. We're um, putting on a show. I'm telling you. Yeah. yeah. Like. So you, uh, decoy fighter, you slide up against the far wall with two very large gaping holes in your sucking chest wounds. <laughs> uh, and as you do, one of the Sinak priests hops down and comes over, and places a hand on your forehead, and you instantly stabilize, uh, and are carted away as the battle continues. Um, Air, it is your turn. <clears throat> okay, well, lost one of our one of our good friends. Um, Seem to be good friends. Yeah. You will literally never meet this NPC again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not creating a backstory for this person. They don't have a name. They are called Decoy. Decoy Fighter. And they I, are now dead. I, I think Air is actually going to attack uh, um, Mentor A. Okay. Yeah. Because she needs the the health regen uh, when that mentor goes down. Fun fact, on my screen, uh, Minotaur's A's red mist is flashing. Perfect. Ooh. That's exactly it's what we're pulsing. looking for. pulsing. Okay. Just like yours. <laughs> it's, very, it's very dramatic. Uh, it is. Wow. Wow, this is... A lot of animations. This one's not. Uh. That one's pulsing. This, one's, uh, this is a little disappointing... 11. Yeah, 11's not going to do it. 11 is mm. a miss. Hmm. Mm -hmm. mm. mm -hmm. Yeah, bonus. What can we do with bonus actions? The answer is. <laughs> bonus not action, much. do better. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Darn. Yeah, I guess that's that, unfortunately. Pretty, okay. pretty uneventful. It happens. We were it trying happens. to keep the energy going. And yeah. It didn't, it didn't really... The, energy, <laughs> it didn't the momentum out. has shifted just slightly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, stay in put. Unfortunately, yeah, just because they don't want to provoke a tax of opportunity. Yeah, fair. Uh, all right, Minotaur B is going to... Oh, but I guess... Oh, no, well, never mind. I was trying to think of it. Because an attack of opportunity would be at advantage because of the flanking anyway. Yes. Yeah, there okay, go. That's fine. Uh, Minotaur B is going to make another reckless attack on Stabby Stabby Rogue. That's a six. But it's at advantage, so it's a 24. 
<laughs> it's a uh, six, but d- dodge. <laughs> <laughs> Uncanny dodge. Yeah. Uncanny dodge does not exist yet at level two. Uh, it does not matter how much damage Minotaur two rolls because you had one hit point left. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> so they just had to roll some. Yeah. Raise raises its hammer. Its hammer slams it across, and I think you go flying in the other direction and hit Oof. the other wall. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I land on my feet. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine, everybody. Uh, this looks not great. Things turned quickly. Uh, if I landed that hit, though, I think I would have felt better about them. If you the landed situation. that hit, things would have also looked really different than they do right now. But you did not. Uh, on the bright side, it is Minotaur A's turn. Uh, Minotaur A is going to. Attack you with their longsword. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're still blurry. I am. So it'll be a straight roll. That's a 20 to hit. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> yeah, they're rolling real good. That's a good roll. Uh, but minimum damage, you will take five points of slashing damage. Okay, and then uh, that Minotaur will take ten points of damage. Oh, Armor of Agathus. Yeah. Ooh, fun. Fun. Armor of Agathus is fun. So here's what we see. Minotaur A uh, slashes into air with their longsword. But as they do, you can see, you in the stands can see the longsword cut into air's flesh. But as it does, uh, the icy armor that has built up on her breastplate uh, seems to seal up around the sword. And then the frost races up the length of the sword and the Minotaur's hand and up into the Minotaur's chest. Nice. And they sort of freeze there in motion, in mid uh, swing, and then give a sort of a cough, and a little puff of frost comes out of their mouth, and they just keel over. Nice. <laughs> and they're <laughs> out. This Minotaur is down. Oof, man, Armor of Agathus. Armor of Agathus. Coming in, great spell. Great spell. Great spell. <laughs> uh, and I get, um, uh, this is because of the curse, I get actually nine points of hit, hit points back. Ooh, nice. Which I believe just go to my under, not my temporary. It just goes to my underlying hit points. Yeah, you just get healed. I think. Yeah, for that's that. how, I don't I think it's ten hit points. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's your turn. Whoa. So you're Things mono mono yeah. e minotaur. Exactly yeah. how Air likes it. <laughs> so still. Oh well, I should um, I have to roll concentration for blur. Yeah. So still do do a con check, ten or better. Yep. It's at advantage, thank God. Or con mm-hmm. save, not a check. Oh, right, because it's so I should be adding my... It's a saving throw, constitution saving throw. Yeah, so 8 plus 3. You're good. Okay. Yeah, no need to roll again. Uh, yeah, it's your turn. Nice. Well, Air, air is was uh, not feeling great about the situation there for a second, but now it feels like she's back in control. She's healed up. Uh, she has still has her temporary hit points. Still has blur. Things are looking good. So then now she's just going to kind of... Uh, um, Attack him with the with her with her longsword. All right, do it. And hopefully, this will go better than last time. Fourteen. <laughs> Fourteen just hits. Ooh, thank yeah. God. <laughs> they are not not heavily armored. It's only the shields that give them that fourteen. Okay, so that's ten. That's ten points of damage. Ooh. Another big, another big hit, and the booming blade. Is and that's booming blade. Yeah, okay. sorry, I'll, I'll remind you of that. Yeah. All right. Very good. Uh, okay, uh, at this point, the you see a little bit of desperation in the eyes of Minotaur B. Uh, they whip around and face you and raise their warhammer, and they make a wild swing to attack recklessly. Disadvantage. Oh, it's at disadvantage anyway, I guess. It's reckless. Reckless is at advantage. Oh, sorry. Reckless no, gives right, them advantage. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. Oh, so then just a straight roll. Yeah. Uh, but that's a seven. So they Finally. miss. Uh, so they whiff uh, wildly, and it is your turn again. Well, we're just gonna keep. <laughs> just, I think we. I think Eric can outlast him in this. In this sense. So that's twenty-four. That is. And seven. Seven points of damage. They are still up, but barely. They're in clearly on their last legs, uh, and they are gonna make one more. Oh, you should roll one more time, because you were supposed to get advantage on that attack. 
Let's just see if you crit. Oh, right, right, right. I, I should be doing... I should be, uh... Nope. Okay. <laughs> All right, they're going to make one more reckless attack against you. Well, that's a natural 20, so they don't have to roll again. Well, you know what? The last hurrah for them, I guess. <laughs> yeah. It can. It yeah. could be really big. We'll see. Uh, three... 19 points of damage. That is very big. They could take 10 points of damage, though. If, if oh, they... and that's it. Whoa! That's the match. <laughs> that's the match. Yeah. Uh, they were down to four. Uh, so, Woof. A, Woof. just a powerful blow against your armor with their Warhammer, staggering you back, but then that same effect, uh, just freezing up through them, and they fall over unconscious. The clerics from the Synoch rapidly race out onto the field and stabilize uh, everybody who has participated. But one of them pauses after that and grabs your hand and raises it up in victory, a victory salute to the crowd who Ooh. goes just bonkers. They're thrilled with this. Air might have found her new call in here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the, the, the bodies are dragged off the field and you are escorted off. Um, you are immediately provided with healing, so you can uh, uh, essentially take the benefits of a long rest. Um, and you are awarded 50 gold pieces immediately in cash nice. uh, as soon as you make it back to the, um, the room. Uh, along the same lines, uh, where's my notes? Here we go. Um, Potom, your buddies in the stands, uh, upon seeing this, turn to you and say, hey, your friend's pretty good yeah, out man. there. I'd say so. That rogue was all right, too. <laughs> yeah, Should have yeah. put a bet on him. <laughs> uh, they hung in there more than I more than I thought they were going to pull off, Definitely. especially after that pathetic attempt to hide behind the... <laughs> when I, when I saw two daggers, I was like, this guy's not going to fare very well. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, we this you earned this, and they toss you ten gold pieces. Uh, so you, your bet paid off. Yeah, you, you had a separate bet on air to win. Right. That I put ten gold pieces on, so I didn't win any money except oh. for my own money back. No, so you, so oh, twenty additional. So 20. I gotcha. Yeah. Um, and air, you can go collect. Uh, so take eighty gold pieces because oh, you yeah. bet forty. Uh, and you got even odds on your bet on yourself. Uh, I think at the conclusion of this battle, it's a good time for us to take a quick break. Jeez. So let me pause our story here. So uh, the morning combat is done, and uh, there is a break. Uh, the next sort of official match doesn't involve any of you. Um, but the match after that will be Freya's. Mm -hmm. So is there anything that any of you want to do in this sort of... I'm going to just one more... Hour or two. One more time. Just go and see if I can... I'm up in the stands, though. Oh, you are? Yeah, I went up to the stands before... Uh, to watch. So I could watch air. I'm going to okay. try to locate... Yeah, you guys can connect. Afraid. Yeah. For sure. Cool. Cool. Do I find her? Hi. You do. Hey, Potom. I think maybe she finds you. Hey, Potom. Potom. Oh, I've been looking what for you. What do you Hey, Air did great. <laughs> yeah, I did. I, nice. Um, but I would like to give you a strategic advantage. Oh, thank you. And so, um, where, where is your, would you like it on your battle axe or would you like it on your on your sword well if, here's the thing that i've been using my um i've been using my shield so i've been yeah my battle axe <clears throat> you want it okay on the battle axe yeah cool so bottom will just tinker ever so slightly with it and yep. her battle axe is now a plus one cool so, can i can i modify that apply for that um or just add one you probably can but i would just note it okay maybe for now Air post match, what do you think you would be up to? That's a good question. <clears throat> I think um I think the second that Air gets handed the 
cash, the box is like, okay, well, you took a risk and this time it paid off, but, mm. you know, you better pay the piper. So I think she probably throws in maybe like, I don't know, 300 gold pieces. 300 gold? Yeah, if you're tracking okay. that. I very much am. <laughs> um, I have no idea what's going on with that. That's a point here. Uh... I feel <laughs> like... Oh, that ledger's an important thing. Yeah. So yes, no, that's good. I mean, we're I'm never happy. estimating. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. To the copper piece, we are tracking. <laughs> Someone's tracking. In case you're wondering. So, um, do you do that in like in the stands? Like, oh no, I no not in the. Oh, I see what you're saying. No, I I mean she I mean she can't. She probably finds like a, a secluded corner or something in the. Yeah, I don't think she's like waving I, about. I, I, I feel like Potom would be like noticey. Yeah, just because he's there with the bros, and that's who he made the bet with. Mm-hmm. And then just to watch you like go off into a corner. Well, well she's so, not with you though. No, well, so the there is. I'm, my my assumption was that this all happens back in the locker room. So right, right, yeah. She you, comes. She off, goes. Yeah, she exit. leaves the arena. It goes back in the gold fighters locker room. Gets pay, gets healed yeah. there. Gets paid there. So this is all out of sight of any spectators. Sure. Oh, I guess I, I thought that she had made her bet with the bros, and so she gets paid for her oh, for oh, her so action. Yeah, he, so if you come up to get paid by the bros, that's no, no, something no, this different. Is, yeah. no, pay, no, because they were like basically handing me the 50 gold yeah. when I, as I was walking off. Yeah. 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 So that's, okay. that's yeah, pre, yeah, post that pre-bros. I, got you. I like how we're just calling them bros now, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, the yeah. arena bros. Yeah, yeah the, the arena bros. For sure, those are the arena bros. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God, I love Fantasy Arena. <laughs> so great. I'm starting to like it, too. If you lose the league, you have to get a tattoo of my name on your ass. <laughs> yeah, there you go. yeah. Oh, my God. This is so dumb. But I saw, I saw an internet video of a guy who lost his Fantasy League. And the, the punishment, or the, their bet, the punishment was... Uh, that he had to to go to dinner and uh, act like he was cheating on his wife. <laughs> That's actually really good. And so, like, she was in on it. it. She was oh. in on it. But, like, in public, he had to go sit at a restaurant <laughs> while she stormed in with their three-year-old or, or, like, their little kid and, like, reamed him out in public <laughs> in front of... Everybody, I think it's I awful. This video. It sounds hilarious. It looked so uncomfortable. It's so awful. But... And he's kind of laughing, but like, yeah. even as he's laughing, people are like, "You're terrible!" Right? Yeah. Like they're, like, and he's laughing. I mean, honestly, it could be true. You could <laughs> for <yeah>. sure. <laughs> but like the rules of the bet where he had yeah. to sit there and, and just take it, yeah, take it while she accused him of being a cheating <laughs> bastard. And I was like, "Oh man, that's so... bad. Yeah. That's bad." The the tattoos I've seen a bunch of that, but like that was a new one for yeah. me. I was like, that's that's rough. <laughs> uh, okay, so paid and paid the box. Yeah. Anybody else doing anything? You've tinkered. Yep. Anybody else doing anything before it's go time? Mm. Okay. Thank you. This is the only way that he gets us to fight is with the arena battles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and not our own characters. <laughs> if I have to, if I have to construct artificial battles, we'll do it. Um before you start the recording. Yeah. Um Well I already did. But... <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. Um Alright, as right. the sun rises high in the sky, uh it is nearly noon and um Freya, you are called upon for your session. Um, Unlike the youth who have competed before you today, you are the first solo combat or the first solo uh, fighter in the honor path to step forward into the arena. And I will tell you at this point, the stands are packed. So there's no more early morning crowd. Like it's, it's Sunday afternoon. This is church, and everybody's here. Mm. The city has come out, and while you are not, uh, you don't know enough about this to know exactly like which matches are 
the headlining matches, but uh, you're not on the you're not on the opener card. I'll put it that mm-hmm. way. Um, but you are one of the first of the matches that people came out to see, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of energy in this stadium. A lot of voices, a lot of cheering, mm-hmm. and when you step out, there's a big roar. Mm-hmm. Um, for a few reasons, uh, you all suspect. Potom, you've got a better line on this. So part of the crowd is pumped because anytime an outsider chooses the honor path, there are a lot of Minotaurs who are rooting for them, right? Because the 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 real like true believers uh, in the Ashira believe, as you, you heard, that one day everyone will become Oshira, hmm. right? And so to see an outsider choose the path of honor is, uh, while it may not work out, the fact that an outsider chose is flattering to the to the Minotaur people and is something that they admire. Right, it takes a deep bow. To <laughs> yeah. <everyone around>. yeah. <laughs> and the other reason there's so much enthusiasm is an outsider like Freya, who is not unique, but unusual in this area, draws huge betting attention. So the Empire presence in this stadium, and it's, it's significant. Exactly what we want as Empire mm. attention. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the elves in this stadium, who at this point make up a good 30-40% of the crowd, who are here for entertainment, not religion, mm-hmm. They're pumped about Freya. They got bets riding on this. This is something new. This is mm-hmm. uh, this is novelty. And that's what they're here for, is to be entertained. Mm-hmm. So uh, Freya steps out into the uh, room. Now, let's rewind just a little bit. Because Freya, before you are allowed out into the arena proper, mm-hmm. uh, you are called for your time and you step up and the priestess of the Sinach who is preparing you uh, looks you over and says um, you must be prepared and purified and they tell you to disarm and remove your armor Mm -hmm. and you are offered a selection of Mm -hmm basic weapons, <clears throat> shields, and you are to go unarmored into the combat. Mm. So on D&D Beyond, I, I need have... you to remove, uh, unequip your armor. Yep. If well, I don't have you're not armor. wearing armor. Uh, but I do have a shield. You can keep the shield because okay. it's not special, but you may not use your battle axe, battle axe your fancy That's... battle axe. I didn't see this twist one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, what kinds of weapons do I have to choose from then? Hmm. Well, um, there are uh, any number of weapons that you've seen uh, that we've talked about. These other minotaurs. Are you wielding. proficient with a polearm? That's all you. N- no, great. That's all you have. <laughs> 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 yeah, what's, what's the only weapon you can't use? Um, no. So there are weapons similar to what you've used. You see uh, massive two-handed swords. Large. Is there a battle axe, axe that I could use there? Yeah. Just I'm gonna just grab a yep. battle axe from a, there. I'm... So you, what it basically comes down to is they're not gonna let you in here with any kind of augmented um, mm-hmm. stuff. All right. You have to choose from their from their stuff. Okay. Well, I will use. No, thank you. Okay. I will use just uh, one of you their battle that. axes then. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, you step to the center of the arena in your uh, stuff. And stepping out into the arena is a face familiar to you, Potom, uh, a knoll uh, with uh, dark, almost black fur, uh, a a very heavily scarred uh, snout, and uh, pacing him two dogs. Uh, sort of yipping at his heels. Hmm. And as he steps in, as he steps in, the crowd uh, 
their energy swells and he looks out at them and kind of goes like this and it's clear to all of you immediately that this is a crowd favorite this is someone that you've seen before and you hear sort of a chant build rotan 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 and as the chant builds the dogs um start to kind of bounce and get the 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 uh, the energy and they blink back and forth uh they just switch places uh teleporting rapidly back and forth as they get all fired up and enthused about what's going down uh so these dogs are really cool yeah blink dogs blink dogs are red um Alex and Thomas, mm -hmm. you are going to be Blink Dogs. Oh, nice. Great. Uh, Alex, you can be the Blink Dog that looks like it's got water coming out of its butt. You got it. Uh, as it emerges from its portal. Thomas, you can be the Blink Dog that is fully present uh, right now. Um, I just have to get to my encounter. Oops, that's Gold Path, not Honor Path. Go. Okay. So, Freya Dessa, roll initiative. Fifteen. Nice, solid roll. Uh, you respond quickly and act first in this combat um okay so got my rage on i'm gonna rage mm -hmm. here quick i uh and i'm raging i'm raging eagle raging eagle all mm, right eagle rage is good for this one eagle rage is good um i've also never used my eagle rage with my new charge mm -hmm. thing so i'm pretty excited about trying that Whoa. Today is the day. Today is the day <laughs> to do it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, I am going to... I'm going to come forward to here and hold an action. Okay. I'm going... I will hold a... Uh, um, battle axe. Okay, holding an attack action. Attack action with my battle axe. Very good. Uh, so, after you do that, uh, Blink Dog A, Thomas, you are up first. Uh, the uh, Rotan, the pack master, mm -hmm. calls a quick whistled command, which is basically an instruction for both of you to attack. Well, now, <clears throat> what what are the rules about the teleportation? Can I just do it at will, or is there a... Uh, the, uh, the dog magically teleports along with any equipment it is wearing or carrying up to 40 feet to an unoccupied space it can see. Before or after teleporting, the dog can make one bite attack. Yeah. So it is an action, technically, but you can do that action and make a bite attack. So you could run, bite, and teleport, or you could teleport, bite. I think I'm just going to start off strong here and just teleport right behind her. Mm-hmm. And bite. Okay. Do I want me making these rolls? Yep. You get a plus three to hit. Twelve. Twelve is with the plus three? Yes. Uh, does not hit. Does not hit. Woof. All right. <laughs> Woof. <Pushy. laughs> Woof. Nice. <laughs> Uh, so, the blink, first blink dog appears right behind Freya and nips out at her, and she smacks its jaws away with her shield. Second blink dog. Oh, does that uh, does my held action though attack that dog? Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Oh sorry, yeah. Please oh, do. Mm -hmm. I I forgot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to battle axe attack you, dog. Let's see here, twenty five. Yeah, that, that really really <laughs> hits the blink dog. Ouch. Seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Seven points of damage to the blink dog. I like what, I like that it's in its uh, little block. It says languages known, and just says blink dog. <laughs> <laughs> like the blink dog has <laughs> its own language. Speaks blink dog. Speaks yeah. Speaks blink dog. And Sylvan. <clears throat> There's also so with the, with the eagle too. Um, just to remind you that the other creatures have disadvantage on opportunity opportunity attack rolls. Oh, oh nice, okay. nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Good to know. That's good to yeah. know. Thank yeah. you. Important. Um. All right. Uh, blink dog. Number two. Uh, is going to get confused and bite its owner. <laughs> oh, wait a second. <laughs> I've got money riding on this. No, 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 no. All right. Uh, well, we'll blink it in... itself its own confusion. Uh, in it front. its own nuts. <laughs> um, and we'll attack. Advantage? An advantage. Uh, no, sorry, they don't have pack tactics. So, um, I'm not... I'm not giving blink dogs. The dogs don't have pack tech, right? <laughs> Even though he's the pack master, <laughs> very questionable. <laughs> yeah, it is uh, flanking. Attack at advantage. Okay. I mean, oh. don't let me attack at advantage. I got money right on, on this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do 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 thirteen. Nope. At advantage. Oh, right. thank you. Nope. Nope. No, that's a 12. <laughs> such, right. such a, <laughs> nope. Calm, confident. Nope. That's a miss. All right. So the blink dogs uh, race up and <laughs> ravening uh, around Freya, but she manages to fend them off. It's all bark, no bite is what it's mm-hmm. turning out to be here. And last but not least, uh, Rotan, the knoll hunter. Oh, you got to be kidding me. You're going to try to make me buy Knoll Hunter in D&D Beyond? I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not doing that because I have Google. So I'll just... And this game was was started on people stealing the information. Right. There's a thousand wikis out here. You're going to make me pay for Morden Kanan's whatever book. Mm, okay. Um, He is going to actually stay back he's going to position himself here uh under partial cover and is going to fire off two longbow shots against you uh so pulls a longbow from his back and launches two arrows your way the first is a 22 to hit that hits and the second it's a 21 to hit. Jeez. It was good rolls today yeah. from the DM. Um, so the first arrow does eight points of piercing damage, reduced to four. Okay. The second arrow does nine points of piercing damage, reduced to four. So you take a total of eight piercing damage from those arrows. And your speed is reduced by 10 until the end of your next turn, as he has fired these arrows into your legs. Uh, in an effort to hobble you. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Fun fact. Uh, all right. Oh, wait. One other thing here. There we go. There we go. And Freya, it is your turn. Okay. You've got dogs at your heels, two arrows... No, when I when I dash, dashing is like double what you would normally go, right? Correct. So ba- mm-hmm. with, when you dash, you basically use your action to get your full movement again. Okay. Um, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to turn and oh, oh, let me see. Action is. I'm. You know what? I'm gonna turn and I'm gonna attack this dog that I. I'm going to attack dog A. Blink dog. Blink dog A. Blink dog A. All right, do it. Let him have it. Uh, 18. 18 hits. Blink dog A already bleeding a little bit. Eight. Takes eight points of damage. Um, so then as a bonus... Blink dog A is looking pretty beat up. As a bonus action, I am going to dash. Although, when I dash away from both of them, they both get an opportunity mm-hmm. attack, right? Yep. Well, that's fine. At disadvantage. I'm going to go... Let's see. 
right up here for okay. my so when I went straight for my so do I take the opportunity to attack first or can I can I uh so I dashed um as a bonus action because I'm an eagle and so when I use the dash action oops then the charge um in the last 10 feet I can then I get five additional points of, oh, like I get an, an extra melee attack and then I get five extra points of damage on it. You get an extra melee attack? Yes. Or is it just, it's no. an extra? Oh. Yeah, it is. So that's, hold on. I can't get back to my, so my charge, so it's, um, when I use the dash action, I get a bonus action to make a melee weapon attack or shove a creature. That's the charge. So as an eagle, I can make a da like use a dash as a bonus. But then you already have used your bonus action. But then. Then you only have. But then one bonus I action. get a bonus action <laughs> get, because I yeah. made a bonus action. I think you're a little shy on actions. To okay. Do what you're so, but so I can't do. do that. So I don't get the the eagle. I thought we had talked about this. That I can eagle charge. When you use the dash, action. As a you bonus action. I can use the dash as a bonus action on my turn. But then when I use a dash no, action... No, you can't can, use the dash so as a I bonus action. So I can't do a... The da you have to use dash as an action. No, no. So instead so I get of the a, attack... A dash bonus action. I can use dash as a bonus action. That's what I get as a, oh, my Oh, you can use dash totem. action as a bonus action on your turn. Yeah. Right. Oh, that complicated. Yeah. yeah, but then you're out of bonus actions. That's okay, your so I don't get. So when you use the dash action, you can use a bonus action to make a melee weapon attack, a melee weapon attack, or shove a creature. But oh, I see what but, you're trying to do. Oh yeah. yeah. So every turn you have action, bonus action, and movement. But you used your action to attack the blink dog. If you didn't want to use your action to attack the blink dog, you could bonus action dash, charge the null, and then attack, and it would be a charger attack. Okay. But but I can't You can't have two bonus actions in a turn. Okay. Oh, see, I thought I'd like I thought I'd done extra bonus action before like rage and then do a bonus action. So when I rage that is my bonus action. And you rage kind of it's thing. your bonus action. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then I'm not going to dash. I'm going to stand right here and mm -hmm. I <laughs> and um and I'm going to I'm going to hold for this turn. I'm not yeah. moving for this turn. Good. That's a good call. Uh, all right, very good. So you nailed that Blink Dog pretty good. You're going to hold there. Blink Dog A, you just took a wicked hit. Uh, it is your turn. You can bite and then teleport if you want. Or um, whatever you want to do. When they teleport, do I get an opportunity attack? You do not. This is why Blink Dog... This is the... The That's tactical it. advantage of blink dogs is the teleport. Yeah. Nice. So blink dogs are instinctively going to teleport away in a. They're meant to nip in, do their thing, and yeah. get out. Real tactics. Yeah. It to be honest, it's probably the tactics is probably the opposite of what you both just did in the first round. What are you talking about? Where you teleported in and then bit. Right. Where you had the you had the movement uh -huh. speed to run uh -huh. in. Bite and then yeah, teleport out, but the which would be the tactic. So cool. The teleport is super <laughs> yeah. cool. But I'm just saying now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it might be tactically wise yeah. as trained blink sure. attack dogs to attack, teleport <laughs> away, and then use whatever movement you want to give yourself some distance. I see. I see. I see. Okay. Well, in, in that case, um, I'm going to bite and teleport away as my DM has instructed me. <laughs> uh, all right. Do it. Plus three to hit. Oh my gosh. Uh, 11? Stupid dog. No, oh, it does, yeah, I was no, gonna no, say, that I was does not hit. Yeah. Just misses. All right. 11, All right. no. Uh, okay. So a nip and a miss, and then you uh, can teleport 40 feet. So Which that's is significant. eight squares. Yeah. Um, and then still have a speed of 40 feet after that. So you can basically position this blink dog now anywhere on the map. Yes. Oops, sorry. I phrased down. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't hit her once, but knocked her out. <laughs> I'm just going to come back towards my owner. Okay. Very good. Uh, blink dog number two. Uh, we are going to bite. 
Oh, that definitely does it. Uh, an 18. Yeah, 18, I think mm -hmm. it does. So 1d6 plus 1 piercing damage. <laughs> Four. All right, four points of damage reduced to two, Freya, since you're still raging. And we'll blink this direction. Okay. You have enough distance to blink anywhere in the arena. Yeah. That's cool. Okay. And you have plenty of movement, too, so you can move wherever you want. Uh, all right, very good. It is the Knoll's turn. Uh, the Knoll is not unhappy with his last round, so he's going to repeat the tactic and fire two more arrows at you. Uh, that is a what's my bonus here? Plus my, that's a 16 to hit. 16 hits. 16 hits. And that is a nine, so that'll yeah, miss. Uh, so Phew. you will take seven points of damage reduced to four points of piercing okay. damage. And once again, your speed what? is reduced by 10 feet. Is it four or three? Oh, three. Sorry. Okay. Three. Okay. Uh, my, uh, I'm reduced, my speed is reduced by what? By, 10 feet. by uh, 10 feet. And he is going to fall back just 10 more feet. Okay. Uh, there behind his dog. Uh, and it's your turn, Freya. Get him. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I have to attack, though. That's the problem. I can't dash on my action. I have to attack. Is it 10 more feet from the original 10? Or is, no, is it just What 10? are we talking about? Charger? Uh, f every time that he hits her with the with the arrows. He said oh. that uh, her movement oh. was... Re no, 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 no. It's no, just... No. It's anytime each... it's... That's uh, the max. So... Okay. So, so each round... No, it doesn't If stack, he lands yeah. a hit, her... Her movement is 10 less yeah. than... Her For, movement is 20 feet. Sure, until the next round. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, so, to be clear, you could... Uh, 20 feet gives you four squares. Mm -hmm. You could dash as your action, and you would still get to attack as a bonus action because yeah. of charger. Okay. Oh, okay, that's right. So you could move four squares and then attack. And that would still give you the charger well, bonus. Oh, but I but I'm dashing, so I can if I dash as my action, I can only move four squares. No, you would get a total of eight. Yeah. So you and get eight squares. You get four yeah. for your regular movement, and then plus four more. your action is four more, so you can move eight squares mm -hmm. and attack. Okay. This turn, because of charger. Yeah, it still doesn't get me close enough. Oh, well, it, get, it gets me close enough to. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, oh yeah, good. that's you right. We, we allow we allow diagonals. We allow diagonals. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And melee attack. I'm gonna go like that. See, that's just good luck. Oh, that's, bad. <laughs> that's bad for him. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Um. You know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna. Oh, but I do. I only have a battle axe, or do I have like other? Non magical. What did you take? Oh, I took what did you take out of the locker room? <laughs> I just took a battle axe. Yeah. I didn't realize I could take one. I mean, there's, okay, one, yeah, there's no, a bunch of regular ass uh, stuff in there. Right in there. Yeah. No. I mean, you can okay. retcon it. Tell me what you took. What would, oh, okay. what would Freya have well, armed the, up with? Well, I would attack with my battle axe anyway, and that's what yeah. I just did. But right. I, um, w I, I'd also take some javelins. Sure. Too. I always right. have a 100% could have javelins. Yeah, I, I've got four javelins in my bag, too. Yeah. <laughs> and my great sword, and a great sword just in case. Sure. Two-handed sword. Okay. okay. All right, so your battle axe attack. Make the roll. I just did. It's 11. 11 misses. 11 misses. A lot of misses going on here. I know. For, on both it's sides. terrible. Uh, not from the knoll, though. Not from, so. Actually, not from the knoll. <laughs> Hold the on dogs, one second. Though. So it's great for him. He's yeah, very, it's good. He's, he's, very he's happy totally with the situation. fine with that. Very he's with totally fine bottom. with that. Okay. All right. So that's bad news uh, for you, but Blink Dog A, you're still well within reach. Oh, yeah. Of, no, no. We're, this this yeah. Dragon Ball is attacking your master. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we can't have that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to move. Mm -hmm. Attack. Bite. At advantage. At advantage. Flanked. Pull a good thing it's at advantage because that was two. Finally. Uh, 21. 
Okay. Sorry, I shouldn't be happy. 1d6 <laughs> plus 1. Uh, 5. 5 points of damage reduced to 2. two. And then I'm going to blink away. Barbarians, man. Those damage sponges. Uh, blink away. You got 8 squares. Yeah, I'm going to blink. Well, considering I haven't done zero damage to uh, our friend the Noel. Yeah. Rotem. Rotem. Oh, He's a like crowd favorite. Be there, actually. Blink Dog B. You're up. Um, that eight squares <clears> of <throat> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well. I guess we'll we'll blink that last little bit. Oh, let's go, let's go four. One, two, three, four. We'll blink here. Mm -hmm. Um, and bite. Okay, at advantage. Uh, twenty-one or uh, eighteen. Twenty-one hits. Or uh, sixteen. Sorry. Um, Twenty-six plus one. Two, 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 two. Uh, one d six plus one. The gold needle print. is uh two points of damage reduced to one. Reduced to one. Um, and then that's it. You still have movement if you want to move away. Yeah, I don't want to attack of opportunity. Fair. All right, it's the Knoll's turn. Uh, the Knoll's not going to use his bow at this point. Uh, he flips his bow onto his back. Pulls out a short spear and jabs it your direction. First attack is a 14 to hit. It does not hit. does not hit. Second attack is even worse. So he really? stabs at you twice <laughs> with his spear. <laughs> We're too close. We're and too close. misses. Um, the giant target in front of him. <laughs> and he gives uh, another whistle to the dogs. Uh, the dogs interpret this. This whistle means defend. Oh, okay. uh, so you can... React to that however you please. Yeah, whatever depend means. Um, and Freya, it's your turn. Okay. Uh, well, I'm just going to battle axe attack. Can't dash the null? Yep, yeah, the null. Okay. Oh, gosh, 12. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately that misses. Yeah. Uh, the, the null is wearing leather armor and your... Um, your battle axe just does not get solid purchase uh, and skips off of a hardened plate of arm of leather. Um, what else you got? Well, you know what? Maybe I will. No, no, I'm holding. I'm gonna hold. Okay, blink dog, a. Owner says defend. Gotta do. Don't gotta know do what this. that means exactly in this context, but I will interpret it as, as I think. <laughs> interpret it as you, as you, you're a dog. So, uh, yeah. you, what? Um, I don't, I don't have any any more specific instructions for you than that. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, I'm gonna move there. I'm gonna bite. Uh, definitely flanked, so go ahead and take advantage. <laughs> Again, the, the, the flanking's in, coming in important here. Uh, 19. That hits. 1d6 plus 1. 4. Reduced to 2. And then... Blink away. Okay. Blink dog B. Um... Okay, so defend me sounds like I am going play dead. Play <laughs> turn. <laughs> I'm going to move around. If I push the knoll out of the way, does Freydessa get an attack of opportunity? If I'm placing myself no, in so between the two, no, forced movement yeah. does not it's create like it's an attack of opportunity. Okay, mm -hmm. so I, I'm going to force him back mm -hmm. and take his spot and bite. Okay. Uh, roll a straight attack. No advantage this time. Uh, 
Uh, it's a nine. Okay, so that misses. But you do push your master back out of attack range. And now it is the Knoll's turn. This is exactly what he wanted. So, good dog. I'm a good dog. <laughs> good <laughs> dog. Woof, woof. <laughs> uh, he's going to move one, two, three, four, five, six. And he's going to fire off two more shots with his longbow. Mm. Uh, first is a 16 to hit. Does that hit you? 16 hits. Okay. Second is a 12 to hit, which I believe misses you. So that is going to be nine, nine points of damage reduced to four. Wow, that's chip, chip away. I haven't even done any damage to that stupid Noel. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's he's, he's got it. He's got. Uh, there's a reason he's been doing it. He's uh, this can, keeps showing up for this. Okay. He's got a he's got a system down. He likes to get paid. Uh, Freya, it's your turn. All right, I'm going to dash up to the knoll. Okay. I'm going to. All right, hang on. Yeah. Make your attack of opportunity oh, yeah. at disadvantage. At disadvantage. Well, if you don't like it, just roll it again. <laughs> I keep, I, well, the, keep there's a bubble. I just, just do it again. Uh, 18, well, 19, 20, 21. No. At no, disadvantage? Oh, at disadvantage. disadvantage. Oh, yeah, that was a nine. Was a it nine. was a nine. Okay, yeah. that misses. Yeah. Uh, all right, so you, you eagle your way past the blink dog. Mm -hmm. You have charged, and now you're making your attack. All right, and I'm going to actually put down my... I'm I'm slinging back my uh, shield and I'm grabbing my greatsword and I'm oh, going okay. for it with my wow. greatsword. Going two-handed. Two-handed greatsword and I've just made a dash uh, with this mm -hmm. with straight. So hope. Oh come on. Oh dear. <sighs> yeah, that's Never bad mind. <laughs> All right, you, you flip your shield, you race over it, and you swing yeah. wildly with your two-handed sword. Uh, but the knoll nimbly ducks under the whistling blade it's as it uh, streaks over his head. Uh, Blink Dog A, it's your turn. Uh, this dragonborn has just attacked your master, and it's right, right in front of you. Uh, it's too bad Thomas and Alex are so mean. I know. <laughs> it's like they don't want you to win. <laughs> I just like to get one a uh, couple of hit points at least against this knoll. Oh my well, god! Man, if you could if you could land a hit, things would look really different. But you've had some pretty terrible. I rolls. have had some terrible rolls. I think I'm gonna have to go to the dice. Well, this, um, this dog, seeing the previous actions of the other dog, feeling jealous about his master's affection. <laughs> Does a similar kind of maneuver. All right. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's kosher. Um, and uh, and but. Okay, just a straight attack. Twenty-one. <laughs> oh god! All right. Six plus one. Oh, uh, three. Three reduced to one. Is this where uh, Potom and Air jump into the... <laughs> like, what's going on? Potom's like, she's not using the battle axe. She's not using her battle axe. Like, Where's the battle axe? <laughs> uh, Frey is bleeding heavily at this point and uh, is looking looking a little rough. Blink Dog B. I think there's something you could do to maximize... Blink the, Dog B. Yeah. In and bite. Closely. Yep, that hits. 19. <laughs> Man, these blink dogs are on point. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, two. Five reduced five. to two. Yeah. We should get some blink dogs for ourselves. I we should. I mean, <laughs> for real, get okay. this guy's blink dogs. All right, uh, Noel Hunter. You know the drill. One, two, three, four, five, six. Longbow, twice. Runs out of arrows. <laughs> uh, that's a nine, misses. Mm -hmm. And an 11, I Ooh. assume, misses. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, your turn, Freya. All right. I can go for him. I'm going to dash again. Dash up. Have my long. You guys want to do your little... Disadvantage on these attacks of opportunity. 12. 12. 
Nope. Uh, twelve. Nope. Twelve's miss. Okay. okay you're All right. There. Come on. <sighs> You so really, need a, really need a hit. <laughs> I do. I'm attacking again with my greatsword. No. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Wait, oh, wait. So that's nine, but plus six, right? For my yeah. greatsword. Yeah. Oh. That, duh, wait, that's wait, wait, 15. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> that's 15. Have you not is been a, adding that this week? No, no, I did. Oh, okay. That's the first okay. time that I did that. 15 oh. is a much better roll than nine, and it like, definitely oh, is. Oh, thank God. Uh, so roll your greatsword damage. <laughs> There we go. 13. 13 is oh, good. Oh, plus 5, because I dashed. 18, 18 points of damage. Solid. All right. There we go. The crowd roars in approval <laughs> as Thank the God. silver dragonborn who's <laughs> flying all around this arena finally lands a gruesome hit with the two-handed uh, greatsword. All right. And the Knoll Hunter uh, yowls, yelps in pain. As he uh, picks his arm up off the ground. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, very good. Blink Dog A, your master has just taken a wicked slash. Yeah, well, we can't have that. Um, same, same, same idea. Oh, oh, you know what? Can I, as as my bonus action, can I swing my sword back or my shield back up? Because that, that doesn't require able... a bonus action. Okay. You can just just put it back up. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Okay, uh, pushing him back. Yeah. Making a bite. Straight roll. Uh, 20, not natural. <laughs> Jesus. All right, 1d6 plus what? <laughs> These blink dogs have nice. landed a hit every time. Uh, uh, just one. Uh, it's, it's two, but reduced, two reduced to one. Two reduced to one. If you were not a barbarian, you'd be so dead already. I know. <laughs> so dead. <laughs> Just from the blink. Although dogs. if you were not a barbarian, you might have better hit armor class. <laughs> yeah, right. so maybe I'm. Hey, my armor class is fifteen. It's not awful. I got the it's extra not, wing of protection, awful, yeah. and you know, I got the shield. So. All right, blink dog two. Uh, blink, blinking in behind. Keep that advantage blink, roll. Blink. Uh, twelve is not no, going to do it. And a uh, ten is not, also not going to do okay. it. All right, managed to keep that shield up. Good thing you brought the shield back in mm -hmm. uh, to knock these blink dogs away. Uh, the Knoll Hunter did not like that slash. Um, but, I mean, this is, he's got one move, and that's what. This is this, he's, a, is he's a one trick pony. Really. He is a one trick pony, which actually works with my dash. So really worked. So it's really good. worked for him up to this my point. My charge. That's yeah. a seventeen to hit with the first bow oh, shot, that does, uh, and another seventeen to uh -oh. hit. Uh oh. So that might be the end of Freya. We'll see. You, um, oops, where'd this go? Where's his longbow? Oh, it's a D eight. Yeah. So oh, max damage. That's <laughs> ten. And eight is eighteen. You take nine points of piercing damage. Yeah. Uh, I'm still up, but not too close to up. <laughs> Actually, even with it. <sighs> Damn dogs. Okay, I'm gonna dash. I gotta dash. You might. You might get me on the attacks of opportunity here. Could it happen. Guys. Disadvantage. Remember yeah, disadvantage. that she's eagle raging. Uh, uh, 14? 14 does not. Five. Okay. Both dogs miss again. Thank God. <laughs> okay. All right. We're going for it with the greatsword. Swinging, right. swinging that down. Come on. I should have rolled that. Nine. Plus five? Or plus six? No. no uh, she rolled it online. I rolled a but, three. Yeah. The, the rolls are so bad. So it's brutal. bad. Uh, I'm going down this next round. Yeah, I mean, ex machina situation. <laughs> Swing yes. wildly, it's bad. Uh, all right, blink dog A. <laughs> oh, I swung my sword back up, or shield back up. You got it. Um, Seventeen. That <laughs> Shit. hits. Yeah. Uh, Five reduced to two. Yep, then I'm down. All right. Yeah, so that's it. Yeah. So the uh, the nips uh, continue, uh, the dogs blinking in and out on your heels on every side. The arrows continuing to yeah. pepper into you until finally it's just too much. Yeah. And 
Uh, I'm like, what happened? <laughs> Freya <here?"> Rogar's <laughs> daughter uh, collapses Rogar. Rogar to the daughter to Freya. the ground. Uh, the Has the fallen. Sinok priestess uh, is quick on the scene to provide relief to you, yeah. uh, and Rotan, the people's the, the people's champion, <laughs> really <laughs> not champion. not the Minotaur's uh, <laughs> champion, but. Uh, a great crowd a cry goes up from the uh, sort of the empire section. Uh, many of these elves had bet heavily. The bros uh, are going wild. The bros, <laughs> the bros are thrilled. Um, and you have you have fallen in I this round fallen. of the Terrible. honor match. Yeah. How can this be? It does it does happen? If it was easy, everyone would be, would be a champion. I yeah, really would. It's not wrong. I just. For healing, I just gave myself ten, so I wasn't in the I'm um, about to die. <laughs> well, and it doesn't at, really matter. As soon as you're taken off the field, the yeah. priestesses heal you to full. Yeah. So okay. you can just execute a long rest. Okay. Um. So the match comes to an end. Uh, the crowd is having a great time, uh, and it moves into a, a downtime, a break time. Uh, there are some bets to resolve. Uh, Potom, your bet on Freya to win has not worked out, so you will not be getting your money back. I'm mm-hmm. so sorry, Potom. Mm-hmm. Um, Next time. However, how much did you put on it, on her? Uh, I think that was so. There was I paid out sixty altogether, so there was fifty on her. Oh, oh big bad. Yeah. Oh well. Hmm. Mm. However, uh, though you did not win. Uh, in the uh, interim, while you're, while the arena is being cleaned up, um, a uh, like a a minotaur who pro- appears to be a young adult, let's say mid twenties, um, is uh, finds a seat next to you. They they're fairly newly arrived. And they uh, chat briefly with the bros uh, as they arrive, and they also kind of give you a look, like they're, you're again, you're a novelty mm-hmm. in this area. And after chatting briefly with the bros, uh, they sit down next to you and say, um, you've traveled a long way to get here, I Real must assume. <laughs> we Where... Uh, from where do you hail? What brings you to Nantong? Uh, I will tell you this: this Minotaur is dressed um, not in the not in the formal robes of the Sinak, but in uh, clothes that remind you of the the priestesses that you've seen. Mm-hmm. Uh, similar color and some similar. Like style, adornments. like pattern adornments, yeah. Yeah. but it's pretty obvious to you this is not a priestess, but probably associated with the temple. Sure, it seems like at a glance. There's a, this is a uniform of some kind, but it's not a priestess uniform, and this is a male minotaur. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, Potom will just, I mean, as Potom does, the kind of absent-minded sort of talking of like oh I, well i originally come from summerwind oh across the great sea fascinating are indeed <laughs> and what uh what brings you to our city of nantong i enjoy the games <laughs> <laughs> the great culture the uh, are you are you attempting to deceive <laughs> this person so there's a little What's... bit of that like now that he's traveled a bit and realizes that there are ulterior motives mm. to information he's, he's not perfect at it but yeah he he's okay. definitely trying to just <laughs> make um, a deception check you got it yeah is air here too I feel like she came up to get the... Vet, well, that the... that's up to you. Would you have come and joined Potom and, like... Come I think to... so, yeah. yeah. That's fine. Yeah, you could definitely be there. Uh, 14. Okay. Uh, he sort of... His horns tilt a bit, and he goes, 
I'm sure. Um, and as the as the noise of the crowd comes up a little bit, he takes the opportunity to lean in uh, just a bit to you, and he says, um, Master Gnome, let me be frank with you. I represent a an influential leader in the city, and it is not uncommon that outsiders including yourself and those you are connected to. And at this, he looks out at Freya being <laughs> dragged off the <laughs> arena, <laughs> arena floor. Um, bring a fresh perspective to the city. You seem, and your friends seem capable. And bring a fresh Last set of... Last battle notwithstanding. Yeah, bring a fresh <laughs> set of eyes. My mistress, Administrator Omari, is always on the lookout for aligned parties. Should you have an interest in speaking further, you can... We could continue this conversation over a game of cards. I believe I know where you and your friends are staying, but I would only approach with your permission. I would imagine... A more discreet setting would be appreciated, Frank. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Frank the Minotaur nods. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then as turns... soon as you said that, I went. Ding. Don't call me Shirley. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, and I know exactly Bottom's response. Oh, God. <laughs> and then he turns back and watches as they set up for the next match. Um, the next couple of matches are, frankly, by comparison, mundane. Uh, some of the youth stand out and have obvious prowess. Some of the regulars in the gold track beat up on these kids mm -hmm. until finally at about three o'clock the last match of the day uh, begins to be set up uh, the last match of the day takes place at 3 30 which you uh, learn at this time of year is the time when the final rays of the sun uh, start to are, are disappearing from the surface of the arena. The, the walls of the arena, the awnings and whatnot block the sun after that. Um, the uh, ritual matches only take place when the full light of the sun is on the arena floor. And the last match of the day uh, is the Minotaur that you um, got some exposure to last time, Stendar, the Dishonored. Um. Can I turn to the head of the bros? Mm -hmm. Be like, I would like to put 30 on him. <laughs> okay. Um, Your credit is running dry here. No. no. <laughs> no. Um, oh, I just took his 50. Ooh, look at this oh, guy. Wow. Yeah, he's big. He's a big boy. Um, what about Minotaur? <laughs> St Stendar. Uh, so you, you offer to put 30 on Stendar with the bros, and they just start laughing. Uh, they're like, nobody's taking bets on Stendar in round one. <laughs> oh, yeah, no one's taking the other side of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, nobody's going to put money against Stendar in I round gotcha. one. They're like, give it a month. If a champion steps up to give him a chance at retaking his honor... You'll see good action then, but no one will bet against Stendar in rounds one, two, or probably three. You'd be lucky to take an exotic prop bet in round three. This is going to be the quickest match of the day. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... That's away his coins. <laughs> yeah. 
not getting that money back. <laughs> Stendar, uh, Stendar walks out to the center of the arena. He walks out with his head lowered uh, and looking just like every other Minotaur who's come before today, barely armored, a massive double-bladed battle axe in his hand. Uh, this is a this is a battle axe that other it's off the shelf it's off the rack in the locker room mm -hmm. uh, but it's a size that the youth were using two-handed earlier today and he has it just held loosely in one hand he's close to eight feet tall just a massive imposing figure uh, though his horns are tipped so it's it reduces the height but he's still an imposing uh, just beast of a of a creature um, and as he steps out into the arena it is an odd kind of cheer because only one section of the arena is cheering but they're going nuts and that's all the elves and non minotaurs mm -hmm. not a single minotaur in this arena is making a sound when stendar steps to the middle but the rest of the arena is going berserk. They are pumped to watch this guy fight. Uh, so it's clear that from an entertainment standpoint, he is a crowd favorite. Right? This is the, the equivalent of seeing A-Rod step onto the field in his prime or Kobe or whatever, right? But not a single Minotaur in this arena is acknowledging his presence uh as he steps into the arena you see a lone robed figure and i'm i don't have a good robed figure oh, that's, you can steal mine yeah i was gonna say yeah that's good that's mm -hmm. that's a that's the vibe unless it's uh yeah you see What's a, air doing down there? <laughs> you see a lone uh, robed figure step uh, out of the shadows uh, that are just beginning to edge the arena. And uh, as the battle officially starts, they are so far back from Stendar that people are, there's sort of a murmur in the crowd, like, what's happening? This figure, uh, their arms lift out of this sort of cowled robe and you see sort of a purple energy encompass both hands and they slap them together and in the center of the arena you see a small portal open up and emerging from that portal you see a large uh, beast and two smaller beasts just kind of skitter out of the portal uh, they're Huge insectoid uh, creatures with massive claws and mandibles and stingers. Um, they resemble, the two smaller ones resemble giant scorpions, but they are sort of mutated and elongated, uh, demonic sort of looking beasts. Uh, the most horrific thing about them is that in addition to being giant, scorpions essentially they have what look like elven faces oh. uh, and with with two huge fangs sort of mandible spider like mandibles coming out pushing out of their uh, skin <coughs> mouths uh, and they're screaming they don't stop screaming as they crawl out of this portal and the creature in the center uh, is also insectoid but has sort of a like a jellied uh, texture to it, so it looks like. Um, have you ever seen like a, a crayfish or any insect that molts mm. right after it molts before mm. the new shell has fully formed and it's mm. like semi-translucent? Mm -hmm. That's what this creature looks like but it is eight feet tall and covered in tiny legs and has uh 
multiple sets of mandibles on the front of it and little tendrils that uh, emerge from around its, what you would call its neck. And it's hideous and you can see sort of the guts and blood pulsating inside it. You can see through its uh, exoskeleton and it's silent whereas these other two creatures are screaming. And it is instantly clear to you and everyone else that this is way outside of what a level one match would be. Any other level one, any other match today would never have stood up against whatever these monstrosities are. Should have taken that bet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and this match is over faster than any match of the day. <laughs> These horrifying uh, abominations race forward, flanking him on both sides, the sort of translucent creature dragging itself forward and spitting a glob of sort of gooey, steaming something at him. And he handles it without any reaction. He sort of just mechanically steps to one side, dodging the goo, swings this battle axe like an afterthought, and lops off both claws of the first giant scorpion, pivots on one foot, launches the battle axe, and flings handle over blade until it embeds itself directly in the center of the forehead of the other screaming elven face, which immediately goes silent. And then he just marches up to this translucent exoskeleton creature, reaches up and grabs a handful of tendrils on each side of its face, and tears its face in half. Mm. And the gore and the spray is ludicrous, and several people near you in the stands lose their lunch. <laughs> but in a matter of 60 seconds, the battle is over, and Stendar stands there, basically untouched. He's got a few bloody streaks on him, a few places where these tendrils are obviously raising painful welts. Uh, but this was not a challenge for him, even though everyone else who was in the arena today looks intimidated. This didn't touch this guy. He does not celebrate. The elven and non-minotaur crowd goes berserk after watching him and there is celebration and things thrown onto the arena all the minotaurs uh in the group uh remain silent he sets his axe down on the ground turns on his heel and walks out without looking up without acknowledging the crowd and with that the crews come out to clean up the arena the administrator uh, Omari comes back out and thanks everyone for coming and invites them to rejoin uh, them a week from now for the next arena day. And everyone starts filtering out. And you all uh, are able to uh, head back to your lodging. Um, somebody needs to pay another gold piece for your lodging tonight. Uh, Air volunteers. I think that yeah. I'm sure that Potom actually already is taking care of that over breakfast. Uh, was okay. was uh, mm -hmm. you know, as you guys were all worried about that, he was like logistics and. Air quickly puts her purse back over. <laughs> yeah. Not any protest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fine, fine, fine. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, Air and Freya, you are healed, though probably still very sore mm. and exhausted from this day. I'm kind of embarrassed, frankly. <laughs> I'm a little embarrassed, guys. Yeah, maybe. That's that's fair. Um, <laughs> Air pretends that she like missed the match. She's like, yeah, well, she's like, well, yeah oh, what yeah. happened? Oh, no, no, no. no. This uh, um, oh, I will say one one small thing is that on your way out of the stadium, mm -hmm. one of the priestesses of the Sinach uh, put her hand on your shoulder and said, warrior, you will be welcome back. I will be back. 
uh, and yeah, uh, the the evening goes on from there. So, um, should you wish to celebrate or not, or just nurse your your bruised ego or whatever that looks like, uh, your characters all kind of settle in for the evening. My hope is that Pando returns uh, either this evening or or in the morning. Um, but it is now a week until the next arena day. And so the next time we gather to play, uh, you will have some decisions to make about how you want to invest your time mm -hmm. uh, next. Uh, I'm going to give out a little bit of experience uh, here. So let me just pull this back up because I closed it by accident. Freya, you will take uh, 100 experience points for your battle. And Air, you will take 400 experience points. For your battle. Nice. And Potom, you will take 50 experience points <laughs> for uh, the new contact that you have made and your assist. And that's where we'll wrap it here today. Uh, Potom pulls the enchantments off of um, his companions. Uh, armor Unused and... battle axe. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. 